Doves, caught by the river on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington, doing the button stuff. Actually becoming a little bit of a producer. Carl, he's yeah. He's a bit of work, hasn't he? He's come up with a few games and, um, we made him- he's getting a bit stressed when we shout at him because the mics don't work or it's hanging off, it was too hot in here, he couldn't get the, uh, thing working last week. I mean, I, I, I really would throw this studio away and get a real one. Yeah. Well, I'd get one of those ones you can buy for, uh, for like tenner from Argos. Argos, yeah, like Bon Tempe, you, my <laughs> first studio. My, my, yeah, my first, uh, With a little picture crew. of Carl on it, yeah. <laughs> exactly. That'd be great, great pro product placement. What have you got this week for us, Carl? Cause again, we've put very little, we, we, I, I said I would put, I'm not hung over, but I've put nothing into Rick, it. Rick, have you then. done any work for this week? No, no. None whatsoever? No, 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 no. Okay, Carl, what have you got? What have you got? Quick. Keep them, they're, they're, it's five past, they're turning over already, they're finding other things. Oh, melon, with there's right. Melon Sue, there's well, everything. Well, go on. We've got, um, after the success of last week, uh, Rock Busters. Okay. We're doing that again. <laughs> Sorry, uh, were you on the same show as us? <laughs> I thought it went all right last week. Yeah. Yeah, okay. good. Right, so we'll be doing that. Got some nice prizes, which, uh, Oh, what prize, what other films have you got? Have you got, have well, you got- Don't, don't, oh, don't, don't wait, tell them yet, don't no, tell them. No, I'll tell you what, if it's Children of the Corn 2, then oh. can I, can oh. I enter this competition? There you go. Come no, on, no, no. What is that? He's got oh. some, uh, different prizes. I, uh, maybe I should, uh, I should just tease the audience with those a bit later, Rick, because okay, there's yeah. some exciting stuff there. It's gonna be yeah. amazing. Yeah. yeah. Right, so I don't, wanna give, I don't wanna give too much away, Rick, but one of them is a copy of The Office on DVD. <laughs> yeah. Is anything uh, like maybe Burt Reynolds' uh, straight-to-video <laughs> film? <laughs> Do any of those in Sadly, there? Sadly, nothing quite as classy. Fist. Yeah. Right? Oh, so we've got, we've got that lot to give away. Yeah. We've yeah. got, um, Go on. Educating, quick, quick. A, educating Ricky, where yeah, the teacher's stuff. Because you taught me that people used to eat tomatoes off lead plates in the land of Narnia last week, which was good. Yeah. No, what it's the only tomatoes they after lead plates, by the way. Why don't, why didn't they think other fruits and vegetables were poisonous? Bec no, it wasn't. It was because tomatoes had acid in them. That was the problem. You see, you don't, you don't listen. listen, right? Well, lots of fruits have acid in them. Yeah, but they didn't eat them back then. <laughs> they, didn't, they didn't have <laughs> bloody kiwi fruit and stuff, did they? Don't say bloody. Then. You're a producer. Come on, you'll start, us start saying uh, shit and cock and stuff, you start saying bloody. Tits. Play, play the- Hang on, right, and- Go on, play the mock- Keep him hooked, right? Yeah. We've still got, a uh, song with a story in it. Yeah. You don't wanna play Babushka, do you? He doesn't like the idea of Babushka, I told him that as a story. Yeah. And, uh, he doesn't like it. A uh, devil went down to Georgia, someone uh -huh. sent in. You know, he's looking for a soul to steal. Yeah. Doesn't like it, won't you like that? Do you know the song? Not particularly. Right, it's a- it's a song about a lad who goes into a pub <laughs> on a, a normal night. And <laughs> it's it. It's in, uh, sort of the deep south of America, yeah. New Orleans, something like that. It's, yeah. you know, it, it's not the old Kent Road. Right, okay. Okay, go on. goes into a pub, there's yeah. a devil in there, oh. he's getting a bit cocky, he's had a bit to drink and he's saying, do you wanna, uh, sort of gamble your soul away with me and we'll see who's best at playing the violin. Yeah. And, uh, I think the lad wins in the end, but it, it's not real enough. Where's the one? Oh. What, what? Not like the shadow that got fed up and started pushing kids off bikes? Rick, I think you're referring in Boston. To, to stuff that no one made sense of yeah, last week. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I don't think well, we should okay, refer to okay, last let's, week. Okay, let's play Mock Turtles, Can You Dig It? And then we'll come back and we'll talk about that. Uh, and <laughs> I've come to the conclusion, Rick, we should never refer to stuff Carl said in the past because it would just take too long to explain. <laughs> okay, alright, that's fair enough. Right. Mock Turtles. Can you dig it? <laughs> Indeed. What I've done there is I've taken the title and I've done it like I'm talking to someone. Sure. Uh, sure. XFM 104.9, I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant Hello and then. Carl Pilkington. So Carl, how excited are you about, uh, Ricky's celebrity boxing match? Are you <laughs> gonna be there? Are you gonna come along? Are you aware of this? You're aware of all this, aren't you? Yeah, I've heard about we can't, it. Yeah. We can't name the opponent, um, because that is. should be a surprise. Yeah. Or, but anyway, it's, it's for, it's for a charity, is it? It's a yeah, charity, uh, yeah. boxing match. Yeah. And, uh um, I always wanted to beat someone up for charity. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's a good cause. But, uh, yeah. the thing about Ricky is, I, I mean, I, just, I don't know if you're aware of this, Carl, but, Ricky's one of these men who, who, you know, he doesn't mind sort of, you know, making a fool of himself on the telly and being funny and stuff, but if people said to him, right, you can either be Britain's funniest man, universally agreed that you're the funniest man in Britain, or you could, like, beat some gangsters up in a pub, he would go that, oh, please, just let me beat people up in a pub, and like, and like, maybe, like, maybe like an old man's being hassled, like, by some street youths, and you come in and, like, smash some bottles over their heads and sort of okay, sort it out. Against the odds, though. Against the against odds, the yeah, odds, there's sure, about five sure, of them sure, against sure, you. Sure, sure, so, sure, sure, Cause he's got this kind Get of- Get to the point, come on. But the point is, he quite likes the idea of being sort of macho, and you know what I mean, and kind of a tough guy, you know, cause he grew no, up in a, in a rut. No, I like pub. boxing. Yeah, I mean, you'd love the idea of people going, don't mess oh, with Ricky Gervais. Uh, if I someone said, don't mess with Ricky Gervais, that would be exciting, wouldn't it? <laughs> Never mess with Ricky Gervais, he will destroy you. That's what you'd love. <laughs> <laughs> go on. Because you used to do karate, didn't you? You were a karate. Oh, I used to go, yeah, yeah. You, and yeah. you got, didn't you get all the way up to white belt? <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, I was one away from black, and then I stopped. Oh, that's right. what I started working. Oh nice. yeah, one, see, one step away from black. I was there. Really? Yeah. Okay. So anyway, um, I was chatting to him last night in the pub because uh, obviously the boxing match is in about five weeks' time, I think, isn't it? Yeah. And well, um, uh, anyway. <laughs> He, uh, was sat there, Carl. I don't know if you know this about Ricky, but, uh, he's taken to smoking cigars. No, I do. Are I'd you be, aware of this? I had the occasional one. He got a cigar, he got like a Monte Cristo out of his <laughs> pocket. It was ludicrous. <laughs> he looked like George Papard <laughs> for the A2, was it? It was <laughs> pathetic. And he was drinking Guinness. <laughs> and I was saying to him, but aren't you doing a boxing match soon? Hmm. And, um, I haven't started training yet. I'm starting training next week. You're not concerned that it's gonna, uh, gonna have an impact? Well, I mean, what I'm saying is, you know, like the, the boxers, they, you know, they normally put in some effort and stuff. Like <laughs> <they're doing laughs> years of training. Yeah, I mean, what you know, what getting I mean? up at five thirty. Yeah, yeah. Because you, as you reminded me of, um, of Frank Bruno, when he was preparing for Panto. <laughs> <laughs> Not when he. Was I don't think he even again. smoked then, did no. he? And drank. No. So I don't. Uh, what's your thinking, Rick? Because I'm, because I'm, cause you know, you're going to get your face pummeled. You know that. I mean, you're going to. They're going to destroy you. You haven't got a chance. That's why I left it this long. So I definitely lost my looks. But you haven't got a chance. You like, haven't Have you ever been taken? Have you ever You're taken a punch to the face? This, is, sorry, sorry. Listen, sorry. But I'm genuinely is, concerned. Is this is this sort of psychological training? Because no, it's not psychological training. It's a warning. <laughs> I've spoken to your <laughs> friends and your loved ones, and they all agree we've got a petition going. <laughs> We're sending it to the BBC. Please do not let this man box. <laughs> Anyone no. else, please. But you're no. just they're going to beat you. Uh, seriously, are you, I mean, have you ever had a punt like a boxing glove in the face? No. I think you should let us punch you next week live on the show. You'd like that, wouldn't you? No, because I just- well, because you've got to get used to it. Because I think you're gonna either, um, cry, <laughs> just start crying inc uncontrollably, or just run away. You'll just run away. You'll just climb out the <laughs> ring and run off. Yeah, this is the same tactic <laughs> Ali used against yeah. Foreman in Rumble exactly. in the Jungle. But I just- Oh, you, dear. Because I think a boxing glove- because I know you're wearing, like, huge- aren't you wearing, like, huge kind of foam boxing No, we're not, no. I thought, no, we're not. We're using, um, uh, not a normal, um, uh, amateur ones. Are you wearing- are you wearing boxing gloves like those ones they used to have on Gladiators? <laughs> <'cause> everyone <laughs> bites the dust. <laughs> <laughs> Those big foam <laughs> yeah. gloves. You just slap each other in the braces. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And a big sumo suit. <laughs> exactly. So, uh, yeah, I should be okay. Do you get to, uh, you get some kind of head protection, do you? Do you yeah, uh, yeah, 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 it's amateur. It's amateur. So it's, it's, it's amateur, you say? No, I mean- So it's, it's not, there's no, no title no, here. No, 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 I mean, um, I think that amateur is head guards, vest, and, um, 16 ounce gloves or something, as right. opposed to professional, which is no vest, bare chested. Oh, right. maybe I can ask to fight bare chested because I'd quite like to show off my yeah, body. Yeah, if I, if I could. I think wrestling is really good <laughs> for you. I think, but I don't mean like those kind of like The Rock and people like that. I'm talking about Big Daddy, giant yeah, yeah. That yeah. kind of. That would be good. Where you can just throw where, yourself where, on someone where they can sort of like be nearly dying, but then they can do a stomach butt. Yeah, exactly. well, I've, yeah, yeah. <laughs> stomach, stomach to butt. stomach. That's a good move, isn't it? In <laughs> British wrestling, I always like that one. <laughs> yeah, and oh, I think dear. wrestling. You would like, like two elephant seals fighting yeah. over a female. Is it true that you've spent, knowing you, you've spent more time deciding what tune you're going to enter the ring to? I want to come out to California by Tupac and Dr. Gray. I think that'd be really I good. I think that's it? embarrassing. And I'm going to come out with loads of, um, little midgets to make me look really big. Sure, sure. I mean, I don't know what the BBC think of that, but yeah. it might be a. I don't know. I, 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 maybe we should take some suggestions as to songs that would be perhaps more appropriate. Okay. Um, I get knocked down, but I get up again. A fatty <laughs> bum bum. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, Play record, Carl. It is gonna be- It's dissed me. It's gonna be It's pathetic. dissed me. Next yeah. week, take a f you take a punch of the jaw next week. <laughs> on <laughs> Cheering breaks. Long distance. On XFM. 104.9. Mm -hmm. On the way in, mm -hmm. right, you know those little cars? They look like a little bubble car. They're modern ones. They look like half a car. The is, ones that, th is that like a smart car? Is that yeah. What they, is look that like, they just look like a, I, like, like a toy car and you can mm. park them sideways. There's only, is there only room for two people? Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's just like the half of the, the front of a Volkswagen just cut in half, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. And, um, I saw one going on Oxford Street and it's a police car. <laughs> a real police car, right? Really? Yeah. And, I mean, I thought, well, what happens if they have to chase someone? They couldn't, but I don't think that's the point. Because it was written on the side, it said something like, cleaner, something uh, more efficient. So I think they're making the point that we're cruising round in this car like we're on the beat and yeah. it's using less energy and stuff. Yeah. But the first thing I thought of, right, was that those two policemen, they must have been going, oh, Dutch Sarge, don't let us have that one. Can't we have the Granada? Yeah. I mean, it's so embarrassing. It's I know. Embarrassing. About, you know, police, you know, they're doing, you know. Yeah. But you've got to respect them. Yeah, you've of got course. Yeah. Street toughs have got but to re uh, respect Exactly. Them. I just don't know if you have the, to. Well, the only thing more embarrassing. What if you're really tall and you have to climb out of one and you're a yeah. copper? Are, th are there any policemen out there who have been 
are asked to drive one of these cars, if you're listening, do you think police listen to this? The only thing that would be more embarrassing is if you had to patrol on one of those bikes the goodies used to ride. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only thing I think that would be <laughs> more pathetic. A pogo stick? Yeah. It's yeah. so embarrassing. Or on roller skates. Yeah. But not like roller blades. Roller yeah. skates, those really old roller skates. Have you seen that you those- tie, That you tie on your socks. Yeah, have you seen those little bikes that look like clown bikes that the couriers use now? They're about a foot high. They're little- I saw a guy the other day on it. I, my head turned, yeah. But They're really just, bizarre. Just think yeah, they're that- They're the ones that they, they fold up. Yeah. But think of policemen chasing <laughs> yeah. you on that. Well, I always remember that even in America when I started seeing policemen riding bikes. It didn't seem to me. It seems. Oh, they're quite cool. They're the ones that go through mm. Central Park on the yeah, mountain bikes. Yeah, but they're, that's it. really cool, isn't it? They, you know, they, they. It looks like they should be delivering newspapers. They whiz along at about thirty miles an hour, and they can just. <laughs> 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 Do you know what I mean? Because like on motorbikes, on a Harley Davidson or whatever, I'm not messing with a cop. A chips. I mean chips. Now that's cool. Yeah. Coppers. Yeah. Yeah. But people in a smart car or a, you know, know. That's, it is a bit embarrassing. But I suppose it is that, or it's better than. Walking, you see. Next, you see them in those. Um, if you really want to be uh, kind of worried about the environment, though, you know those uh, little taxis you see that people pedal. <laughs> they pedal around Soho. In those. Yeah, and when it's a, like a, a, a riot squad, there's four in the back. <laughs> exactly, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but that's the thing, right? If if they need to arrest someone, yeah, here we go. Go on. No, well, what do they do? Because they do only sit two, so do they have to flag a cab down or something for the it's for a the criminal? Point. We'll give what you the you money. Do? Get a receipt. <laughs> take you definitely to will go there. Yeah. yeah. You definitely will because we've been caught this way before. <laughs> exactly. The no, last one, he just ran off. <laughs> no, I won't run off. Okay. okay. Well, I'll tell you what, um, uh, uh, Mr. Policeman, I'll take your car. Then I'll. Th okay, go on then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you yeah. definitely bring it back though. I will. I will. <laughs> well, you, there, uh, isn't there something in America where when they arrest someone in America, they don't take them back to the station and fill out all the forms? They just take them back to the station and then they go and fill the forms out in a like a cafe or something, so they're still looking out. Yeah. Yeah, Carl told me that. They're what? So yeah. they're still on patrol, is it? Yeah, they? so they said they're doing all their paperwork, but they're in the, f you know, a, a cafe window and they're looking out. Do you know, like how they say in this country, so much police time's wasted by having to go back to the office and filling out loads of forms? That sounds like some policeman going, yeah, I could get a lot more work done <laughs> yeah, if, if I was, was in a Starbucks. Yeah, yeah, no, there's a lot of criminals in the pub and, uh, <laughs> if I would, yeah, you know, yeah. and I'd get to keep the receipts. Yeah, I mean, what, what's safest is if I didn't wear my uniform and yeah. probably got drunk. Yeah, yeah. With, yeah. with some mates. Or a lot, a lot happens in, you know, looking out my bedroom window, so if I was just like <laughs> snoozing, <laughs> yeah, I was exactly. snoozing and when I heard a noise, I just pop, oh, look out, <laughs> oi, yeah. come here, come here. Yeah, apparently there's a lot of crime, uh, in Marbella over the next two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> pay me so to if there's a policeman listening who has to drive one of those cars, were you annoyed when your sergeant went- It is went the most embarrassing. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. No, I think the pogo stick. Pogo stick, well not. Oh, the, yeah, <laughs> the, the pogo stick. The, the, the triple tandem. The That's triple great. Tandem. We should get that. <laughs> we should we'll, get that. Well, we'll we do our road show. <laughs> Carl does all the pedalling. Yeah. I'm in the basket in the front. Hello, like Western <laughs> Superman! <laughs> <laughs> Play a record, Carl. What have you got? <laughs> what do you want? But, um, Mark the Hoople? Oh, Mark the Hoople, yeah. Dug it out of the library. Yeah. It had one, it had one, it had greatest hits, which was enough, wasn't it? What yeah. you got for us, Rick? Roll away the stone, right? <laughs> Coldplay, The Scientist. Have you seen the video for that? No, but- Absolutely magnificent. Is it? It's brilliant. Oh, it's the one who's walking backwards yeah. in the woods. Oh, yes, I have, Absolutely yeah. Absolutely yeah. extraordinary. Well I, I like all well their videos. I think they're great. Yeah. I still haven't worked out how they do that one with the- whether it's a filter, they just turn up the light, cause it gets light. Through oh, the duration of the video. Along, yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. And it's slow as well, so he must have. No, I'd like him to win an down. award. I'd like him to win awards. I yeah. like Coldplay. Yeah, no, good um, uh, Rick, can I just. Sorry, I don't mean to abuse our position again, but Bruce Springsteen's performing in London tomorrow night, yeah. and you remember I made an appeal to try and get a free ticket. Yeah. Well, I don't even mind paying. I, don't, I, I tried to pay, but. That's um, good of you. <laughs> I thought you were mean. No, go on, what are you going to say? But you were going to pay for is, ticket. I, I, you know, well, face value, I mean, you don't want to be ripped off, do you? No, don't be crazy, you know, yeah. ideally half price. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. and I just, I, I, I'm, I'm, I've been chasing kind of my tail, really. I just, I'm, I'm not going at the moment. I'm not going, and I'm desperate to see him. Man, I mean, he's, you know, he's going to do a great concert. It's mm. his only one in in London. I can't believe that being on the radio, being on XFM, you know, the, the listenership's going up. Apparently, mm. I can't believe I can't get a ticket. I, I've asked Carl. He's done nothing. He's done nothing. No, no, no Carl, Carl had a very good point. Nothing. Carl, say what you said when he was whinging no, in the. No, but first of all, whilst you're moaning, you also asked in the week for a badly drawn boy album. Yeah, you got in today. Yeah. There's one there for you. Well, yeah, yeah. but it's yin and yang. And it's Carl. like, yeah, but I do, you know, Carl, what's Steve ever done for you? That's what you got to ask yourself. What has Steve ever done for you? Well, he took me to the Baftas. Yeah, but only because no one else would probably want to go with you. <gasps> <gasps> oh, 
I can't believe that. What is I this? I do not believe that. Oh, Steve, I'm gonna stitch you up now, Carl, and it's in a nice way, and don't worry, it won't be too bad, he won't take too bad. Carl sent me a little text message today. Right. Um, no, no, no. Oh, what is this? Um, I right, okay. Okay. You know, I'm in a very frail mood at the moment. No, no, I'm you're like this, to see Bruce. This is funny, because me, uh, me and him have been, like, sending, uh, trivia back and forth to each other. Which is another point, right? I sent him- oh, well, I'll get to that in a minute. I, I thought he'd really be amazed with, um- Well, right, while I'm you're right. fiddling, if you can make my dream come true, uh, to go and see Bruce Springsteen tomorrow, then give us a call on the usual yeah. number. Yeah, but like I said, Steve- What? Right? It's- it's- wouldn't be- right, you just said when the song was on, can't believe it, right, we work at XFM and I can't get tickets for Springsteen, right? Yeah. Mm. We work in radio, we should get tickets. Mm. Right, now think Which of I'm the amount- Which I'm willing to pay for. Yeah, but mm. think of the- yeah, but if it's sold out, it's sold out. Yeah. Right? Yeah, but that's just something they say. Right, that's just what they say, is it? Right, so everybody on local radio stations say, do you know, I, I like that Bruce Springsteen, I, I want a free ticket, right? So another say- I tried to phone, I phoned for an hour and a half, I couldn't get through. Not long enough, I've put not the long hours enough. in. Not long enough. Not long enough. What are you talking about? I've put the hours in. No. Right? So another 400 people turn up at the gig, they cram them all in, there's people being crushed, you know, they've paid the money early, they were up early that day when the- when the phone lines were open, <laughs> whilst you were probably sleeping and that. So they're dedicated and they're the ones at the front getting crushed. What? Would you Why mind that be crushed? happy if you were there getting crushed? I don't mind- I'll sit at the side of the stage and watch him. Yeah, but- I the, don't mind. But everyone will say that then. And then what? before you know it, yeah. no one can see anything because no, you're Carl's on the right stage. On this one. Leave right, it. Yeah, read, right, I'm gonna give you this- I'm now handing over my mobile phone to Steve to read the- you can see it's from Carl at the top, but just read it out as you scroll down, just read it out loud. Is this a text message from- Yeah, this is a text message to me from Carl. Read it out. To see at night as well as an owl, you would need eyes the size of grapefruits. If only Stephen could turn his head right round as well. <laughs> I- Carl, I can't believe it. <laughs> What- what upsets me most, Carl, right, is not the fact that you've been slagging me off behind my back, it's the fact that you've got the cheek to come on here and moralise because you failed to get me tickets and make a dream come true. You've come on here trying to pass the buck and say that it's a health and safety problem, when mm. in actual fact it's a it's Carl Pilkington it. problem. Do that, do that, I've got it in a I bit. can't- I'm devastated, I'm devastated, you know, I- know I, I didn't- and then- I didn't- start, let's play a record. I just- I'm upset. I should've eaten this banana. Off What's the number? It's uh, 08700 800 1234, but if it's sold out, Steve, it's sold out. Get a bit of a classic, eh? R.E.M. I bet if Ricky wanted to go, it'd be fine. I'm sure someone could sort it out then. Who? Oh, if Ricky Gervais wants to go, then I'm you can going. come. Are you? No. <laughs> <laughs> you want some tickets, though? Yeah. <laughs> you two. Electrical Storm. That's great. That's great, I love that. I'm XFM, 104.9, I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant, and Carl Pilkington. Carl, I want you to tell Steve what you told me in the week. <sighs> about right. the snake, about the anaconda, how to- Right, this is Carl's method. He's not scared of the anaconda, the thirty foot long, biggest, scariest snake. No, you were talking the about world. stuff, weren't you, about in jungles and that, and animals- <laughs> That we do. Yeah. <laughs> right. And I remember reading, hmm. about- Say if you're in the jungle and uh, and you get tired and you go to sleep, right? And you and you sort of wake up and you feel something on your leg and you look down and it's an anaconda, right? Yes. And it's uh, it's swallowing your feet because they apparently they always go f from the feet up. Uh -huh. They never they never eat you from the head. So um, okay. Um, I, 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 should I should I save these points to the end? Cause make, that's make a list of the points. Because they, they always eat head first. Because the way the fur goes, where they, they have to take a capybara or even a rat, they, they take it from the head but, but first. Make, make, the, make, make, sure, okay, make, make, make some notes. Okay, so that's wrong. We'll come back okay, to next. Later. Go on. So they always eat it from the feet. Go on. So, so they swallow in your feet, and <laughs> it's said on on the on the website, if you wake up and you see this anaconda doing that sort of eating away at your feet, don't panic. Um, don't and panic. I'm don't just writing this down. Don't okay. panic. Well done. Okay, go on. Don't, uh, don't try and kick it off. Okay. Just let it sort of swallow you. Mm-hmm. But only up to your knees. <laughs> okay. okay. Why, right. why not kick it off straight away? Cause it, uh... I think it sort of gets a bit angry, it starts thrashing about and it, oh. it can swallow faster, I think. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm so guessing good. that bit. Okay. Uh, Just put a question mark by that. Okay, there, pop a question mark next so, uh, to uh, eat so knees. Yeah, so it's up, eat it, knees. So it's, eat it up to your knees. It's, yeah. it's up to your knees. Yeah, and then what yeah, you yeah. do is you yeah. get a knife. Yeah. Okay. And you cut. And how do you get a knife? Do you do, you, do you walk over to the kitchen? I was going to pop over. Get knife. Where's <laughs> that coming from? Get well, you, a knife. You always have a knife. Okay. Always have a knife. Of course you do. <laughs> Otherwise you're a fool. Always have a knife. Okay. okay. Well, Eat, uh, come on. Yeah. 
Yeah. If you're gonna go into a jungle- Always have a knife. Okay. Always have a knife, yeah. Simple. Um, could I just suggest something? You know, suppose you got- you're wearing combat trousers, and the knife is actually in the- the, you know, those- the trousers by the knee, the sort of pocket by the knee. What happens then? You could- I suppose you could still reach in- <laughs> into the mouth, couldn't you? So anyway, you've got a knife. Let's well, say you've got a knife. Let's say you've fallen asleep, the anacondas, you're chewing your feet, you let it eat up to the knees, you've got a knife, what do you do then, Carl? Right. So it's up to your knees, and what you do, you get your knife that you got out of your pocket earlier, um, and you cut it at the mouth, right? Do you know, like, either side of the lips? Right. So you're sort of cutting it in half. Right, like a Chelsea and smile. And it can't- yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. You can't do anything. Uh, it wasn't ready for that. It can't move about because it's got, like, your legs in its mouth. Uh-huh. Um, and peel it off and walk away. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, my- my main point, really, is this, Carl. Never will an anaconda or any constrictor, python, boa constrictor, uh, just start eating a sleeping man. <laughs> he will crush you to death first. That's why they're called constrictors. They're not called gobblers, are they? <laughs> or holy swallowers. They're called constrictors. Why would he start eating something? Is that how they t take down antelope? Just start chewing their leg? Oh, it's gone off. I'll tell you what, lads. They get together. This next one, they said, I'll tell you what, we're losing a lot of prey by just living at their ankles. They're running away. Let's crush them to death first so they can't move. Then we can swallow them. You're a fool. So anyway, right, so uh, I was telling him this bit of information because we started a feature last week. Mm -hmm. Well, week before. So Sorry, Carl, course. can we just go back to the crushing you to death first? Yeah, but, well, I read it. He's won, he's won there. He's beating you there, Rick. <laughs> okay. Did I'm it say what to do if it starts crushing you to death first? No, 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 no. Did it say what to do if, so supposing it, 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 it had this meeting, it had this meeting, and it, it started crushing you and you woke up and it was actually round your chest. And every time you <gasps> try to take a breath and breathe that a little bit, it just tightened his grip because it can feel that. What what what'd you do then? You uh you sort of tighten yourself up anyway because oh. I've read about that. Yeah. If Go one on. does start wrapping around you, you sort of make yourself into a ball first of all, and it'll wrap around you. But it's all right because you're pre protecting your lungs so it can't crush you, and then you just sort of shout for help and right. you and you, oh, you, you shout shout help with this thirty foot snake. <laughs> Can I, do, do you know how it works? It gets as tight as it can. It can feel as tight- actually as tight as it can, right? With these huge, huge muscles, yeah. right? Yep. Right? When you <gasps> leave a bit of breath out, it tightens do again. Don't- you won't be that out of breath. You haven't been running anywhere, so you can just go- What, and- and, and when do you get the, the new mouthful of oxygen? Just- just breathe very slowly like you do- How? Do you know what breathing is? Do you know what breathing is? <laughs> it's extending your rib cage, right? Intercostal muscles between the ribs. Contract like that. Okay, making the rib cage expand, which pulls air in through. It's like a bellow. That you can't just breathe by via the mind. It's a physical process. It's your rib cage. <gasps> well, maybe, maybe I'm special, but I can do little breaths without my rib cage. Play a record, Steve. <laughs> yeah, you're special. Play a record. No, 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 no. You you can't take little breaths well, without moving your rib cage. Can I just give you the titles because we're running out of time? We've got a competition to do. Okay, all right. Let's just leave the anaconda so discussion. That, Why don't you agree to disagree, and we'll <laughs> see who survives if, if you crash <laughs> land in the jungle? Right. So, right. Uh, what is this? What are you doing now? This is educating Ricky. Right? Oh, ah, good. I'm going to look forward to this. Yeah, Three Ricky. topics that I teach you every week. Yeah. Okay. Now, obviously, um, I should just remind people. You normally summarise each of these in a kind of bullet point heading, which you tease us with. So, yeah. what have you uh, reduced them to this week? Right. We've got um, stocking ache and waterman. Stocking <laughs> Aiken and Waterman. Good. Yeah. Uh, what else have we got? <laughs> We've also got, uh, what else is it? It's not his, his vault. Yeah? It's not what? It's not his vault. Okay. Yeah. And we've also got, get a lobe of this. Get a lobe of this? Yeah. Carl, they're genius. <laughs> Rick, are we choosing one of these after new order? <laughs> Oh, Foo Fighters and All My Life on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Jamaica with me, Stephen Merchant and Carl Pilkington. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, just before we do educating, uh, Ricky, this is where Carl thinks he can give me something of interest and teach me something to take away. Last week I found out that, uh, somewhere in a strange land people thought tomatoes were poisonous because they ate them with lead. Um, things like that. Um, what was the other one you told me? Uh, was it last week? Uh, bit so, of worms. 
Cut yeah. me off. Yeah. Oh, I, I uh, sent him a text message. I was on the train, a bit bored, and uh, I read in, I think it was Metro, scientists have found out that, um, uh, worms get stressed. And they found out that, uh, the fat ones, um, didn't live as long. And when they checked the thin ones that lived longer, they found out they had a gene for de-stressing them. Right? Carl, what, do you remember what you said? No. He went, well, that's stupid, isn't it? He said, did these uh, other ones die of natural causes? <laughs> I went, yeah, he went, all right. Because it could be that the fat ones couldn't get off the pavement quick enough and got squashed. <laughs> so maybe the scientists go, yeah, we didn't. <laughs> yeah, they come to think of it, they were flat as well as fat. I yeah, think the reason that the uh, worms are getting stressed is because uh, people like Carl are cutting them in half to try and make two snakes. Yeah. Yeah. Two, two worms. Well, yeah. Well. That's the concern. <laughs> he huh? said, he said they can't even commit suicide if they're stressed by cutting <laughs> their throat. <laughs> <laughs> I also sent him um, what I thought was quite interesting that the scientists have found that um, the elephant hasn't got the best memory. The sea lion has, uh, right. based on. Uh, they've, they've got a sea lion and they, uh, got it back into the old, uh, laboratory ten years after it taught it a simple trick and it could still do the trick. What did you say to that, Carl? I'd say they don't go up to much anyway, <laughs> so if you do teach it something, it is gonna remember it. Sure. Cause it's got nothing else to do. Yeah. yeah. And then it also, I mean, I like sea lions, they look nice and everything, but what do they do? What was that? <laughs> sea lions? <laughs> yeah, what, what are they here for? It's another jellyfish, so as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> it's like, it's there and people know about them, but what do they do? Mm. Yeah. What, does what do we do? do? What do we do, Carl? Well, what do we do? A, a cat, a cat, first, Steve said, is good for your heart, so you-, you Why is it all geared to what's good for us? Well. <laughs> anyway. Educating Ricky. Ricky. Uh, Good, we settled that then. Go on. <laughs> the titles that are, yeah. uh, meant to sort of pull you in. Yeah. We've got, if, uh, what, what, what was it? So, uh, Stocking, Aitken and Waterman. Yeah. You've got, it's not his vault. <laughs> and, uh, get a load of this. <laughs> get a load of this. So, uh, which pun do I pick first? Um, I think I'll go for, uh, get a load of this. Get a lobe of this. Yeah, get yeah. a lobe of this, yeah. Well, that's, uh, that's a story about a girl who, uh, <laughs> she was deaf, right, for, for four years. And, um, it happened quite a bit back this. What year? Or was it, about, what, what, I think it was in, ages ago, was about, it? About, yeah, quite a bit back. Yeah. Uh, she was deaf for about four years. Having an argument with her mum, it said, which I didn't quite understand, because mm. I don't know how they do that. Yeah. But she was having an argument, well, a and a man pushed her against the wall, yeah. and she banged her head, and her hearing came back. Okay. Uh, was she wearing a Walkman, and it fell out, and she'd realised, oh, that's There's what. no explanation. There's no explanation? Well, why is that teaching me something right, then? so I knew you'd say this, <laughs> right? So I thought, right, I'll stick something on it. Do you know that bees are deaf? <laughs> no! No, you can't just, no! <laughs> If no. you ask someone something they don't the answer to, they don't tell you something else, just I'll tell you something else then. I can't answer that, I'll tell you something else. Imagine that, if you asked a teacher. Look, how do birds fly? Wow, if you're gonna do that, tallest building is, <laughs> I mean, what? Well, that, that was the equivalent, Carl, of running away. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the intellectual equivalent of going, look over there, there's a monster. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Listen. What do you mean? What she? Okay, so oh. so she. Her There's hearing no came explanation. Back. There's no explanation. <laughs> or you don't know. Well, there isn't one, is there? Really? It's a bit what? Weird. Did the, the doctors, only did thing the doctors that... not look into it? No, I think they just said, "Oh, that's good." <laughs> But, they, so, again, I don't- <laughs> where did this information- is that- if you read this on is the that net, is it? that all they put there on There was once no. a deaf woman who hit her head and she and could hear. Came it was bizarre things about being deaf. Was there free, oh, like- yeah. was there I've free got that book, yeah, it's a good book, that. Was there three yeah. more pages you just couldn't be bothered to read off? Yeah. No, no, it was just a little bit and it Was said, there a little picture, a cartoon picture? No pictures, I just read going, it. Ow! Look, Ow, if you I don't want to know, if you don't want to learn, you know. <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay, uh, uh, um, it's not his vault. Let me have it's not his vault. You've got to save this. This has got to teach me something. It'll be an interesting story. Right, it's not his vault. This fella. Yeah. Um, what year? Ages old, old ago? times? In, I'd say in the 70s. Okay. Would you? <laughs> Any evidence for that? And, uh. Does he wear flares in the, uh, <laughs> in the story? Right. Is that your reason? No, it's, it's a bit like your regala, this fella, right? Where oh. he's electric. He's electric. And, um,. <laughs> if he walks past the telly, the telly would fizz. Uh huh. If he walked past the radio, it all goes like that. Ooh. His hair stuck up all the time. Ugh. And he'd be having a bath and everything would be alright and then the power would sort of switch on in his body and the electric in his body made him jump out of the bath. 
<laughs> so. <laughs> what do you mean, so? What is that so? What does that so mean? You've given us nothing. You've given us nothing. You'd have to at least give us the scientific explanation. Yeah. Electric eels have 400 volts in them. Oh, is this the running away again? <laughs> what was that one called? Yeah, but they, they, they but it's not, a, it's not his vault. But there's a reason <laughs> they, 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 it's not his vault. <laughs> <laughs> it's not his vault. I thought it was going to be something about I keeping think it we should, safe. I think we should do these the other way around. <laughs> I think you should tell vault. us the story and then we'll hear the pun. <laughs> it's not his vault. <laughs> it's not his vault. Right, let's leave it. Play a tune. Educating Ricky. Finish. Uh, We're not doing it. No, we are. Oh. What, don't look at me like that. Oh, Carl, what? are you in a bad mood? The oh, Carl, uh, dreaming right. of you. Right, do the last one, do the last one. Carl's saying we're never doing this again, cos we don't appreciate it. Yeah, Carl, you don't know how good this feature is, mate. Right, last one. Yeah. Stocking Aitken and Waterman. Go on then, tell me about that one, what's that? What am I gonna learn from this? Right, well, do you know the saying, put a sock in it? <laughs> 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 I like it already. Do you know the saying? Yeah. Right, well, do you know where it comes from? I assume it's shut up, so I'll stuff your mouth with a sock to well, shut you up. years ago. Yeah. Sorry, am I right? Mm, no, not really. Ages ago. 1970s? Uh, 50s, okay. I'd say. Do you know the old, uh, I'd say! Do you know the old gramophone? Yeah. With the, with the big horn on it? Yep. Yeah. Right, well, those stereos didn't have a volume control on them. Right? So they'd be listening oh, so to you'd the put a sock in the And you'd put, mute. you'd put something like a sock. That's on. a real one, you see. That's taught me something. That's, that's good. That's yeah. excellent, Carl. That is the that is the only one that counts, like chewing the fat, if they're true. I'm assuming they are. It works. It's of interest. I haven't got it verified yet, but that is educating Ricky. That's brilliant. I will say the other two were more entertaining. So, you know, I do don't- you see, Do you understand the distinction, though, between that one and Electrical Man? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, um, can or you... I've hit me head, I can hear you, Mum. Yeah. <laughs> can you see the difference, though? Or- uh, Are not, all, all not three really, because I, when I read all three, I took something away from all of them. What, what did you, you take, take away, away from the, the electrical man? I just thought, oh, imagine that, imagine how annoying <laughs> that would be. <laughs> <laughs> but that's yeah. not education, is And it's really? not taking anything no, but, away. Well, think about it, right, we take our lives for granted all the time, don't you? You get up in the morning, it's like, oh, I'll, I'll get up and walk for a shower. Some people can't walk, right? Yeah, yeah. This guy, you can't even have a you know what I mean? It's nice to have a bath, isn't it, when you've got time on your hands and yeah. you can relax. This guy can't even do that. It might be alright for a bit, but he's not really enjoying it, cos at any moment it could strike. Yeah. So, he can't even do that. He can't comb his hair, cos it keeps going to mess. Yeah. He can't watch <laughs> his hair. Talking you. No, can't. <laughs> does he- does he fight crime? What does he do with his powers? <laughs> yeah. I think he just has to sit around, because no one- he can't work with machinery. Right. Cos <laughs> it'll probably blow a fuse. Yeah, so he just sits around. Think about it, what can he do? Mm. What normal things can he do? Skateboarding. Going for long walks. Yeah. Put a wetsuit on. Well, you can't do that. Why? Ooh, water and electric. No, no, wetsuits aren't actually wet. <laughs> They're dry yeah, initially. You just put a whole wetsuit on and walk round with flippers and A wetsuit's not like a dinner jacket that's like really <laughs> wet. Well, <laughs> yeah. all, all I'm saying is think, do you know what I mean? Oh, okay. And, right. and what was the and other the, the girl, the girl death, the four the years it's her head. Yeah. That's just, What uh, have you learned from that? What is that? Well, imagine, imagine how happy you'd be. Remember that time when I, uh, <laughs> I nearly died when I choked on a Mr. Freeze Pop? <laughs> <laughs> right, no, what, tell what? us that one again. No, I told you, didn't I? Tell us you? again. Yeah, but the people will remember it and then it's- They annoying. weren't, they weren't listening. Go on. What happened? It was ages ago when my mum and dad used to go out shopping on a Friday. 1970s? Get, get, get the food in. <laughs> get, get a week's load of food in the cupboard and that. And we'd, uh, you know, they'd come in with all the food <laughs> and we'd all be like, oh god, you know, there's no food left on a Thursday really, so we'd all be hungry on the Friday by the time the food got in. Mm. I love that! And but I'd they wouldn't like, either. It's a, it's a, I imagine them like jackal puppies. Yeah. Just like, like, <laughs> licking your parents' mouth for food as so, they come through the door. So they come in from the supermarket, they're emptying the box. Our kid had got some biscuits and what have you. <laughs> I, I, it's frenzy, uh, just a feeding frenzy, like pigeons. I grabbed the Mr. Freeze Pop <laughs> and knocked it back really quick, but it hasn't, it wasn't frozen, so I knocked it back so it was like a liquid and it went down the wrong way, right, yeah. and I was choking, right, and I nearly died. It, it must have been about, how long can you go before you die? A couple of minutes to do right, it. I reckon about a minute fifty. <laughs> right, I was, I, I was really close to dying. <laughs> How do you know you were close to dying? <laughs> me, uh, me, did your life flash before you? No, but I just was like, 
<laughs> There's loads of incidents of him eating pops. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> just, 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 just 40 of those. Whatever, what, right? Anyway. What do you think you'd see <laughs> if your life flashed past you? What do you think, <laughs> which elements would stand out for you, do you think? <laughs> what, what? Uh, Start now, go back. What do you remember? What's the first thing you remember? As a kid. Yeah, yeah. just anything right. now. Being in the hall and having our dog licking me face. <laughs> 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 That's your earliest memory. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, zoom. what's the next one? Gonna, right, next I'm one's probably what? being at being at primary school with yeah. uh, Lindsay. Yeah, was little, that your girlfriend? Well, a little friend who was a girl. Sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And we used to have like tins with with letters in, and you'd have to write stuff. But anyway, what were we doing? <laughs> what? Got confused. Right. So anyway, I'm intrigued by the right. dog that was licking your face. Well, been that. <laughs> <laughs> we won't win that. Rock no, it's a great feature. I just think you need to be a little bit more careful about what what you consider oh, to be education. Gone All funny. Right. I All fell right. over. All right. Well, right. I'll we'll work on it next week. Play right. a tune and what have you oh. got for us? Because we've got a big competition. Come on. We've got twenty. Yeah, we've got twenty. Don't worry about it, Carl. Play a tune. We'll come back with Rockbusters. What are we playing? Let's play a bit of two pack. Oh, that's what I'm coming out to, isn't it? Yeah, fight. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Imagine it. Whack it up. Whack it up. Two pack. California Love. Yeah. And that's the big tune that uh, Ricky will be coming out to when he has his celebrity boxing yeah. match. Yeah. We're all looking forward to that, yeah. Rick. Yeah. 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 Competition time, Carl? Oh, Carl's looking forward to this. He's just getting all stressed about his half hour. Like it, like Pete. Oh, go on. Go no, on, it's sorry. just, uh, we should have done this a lot earlier. Cause Why? Just keep him, it keeps him locked in. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right, uh, if you haven't heard the game before, I'll give you some initials, bit of a cryptic clue, and those initials and the cryptic clue makes up some band, not might not be an XFM band, but it's a band or a pop group or an artist or something. Yeah. Uh, it's on What's email. the feature called, though? What's the feature it's called? called? Rockbusters. Rockbusters, yeah. Absolutely. Do you want to, uh, will we do this on email? I think we ought to, because you don't like taking calls from the public, do you? Well, you can't work the machine. No, <laughs> that's absolutely yeah. right. It's yeah. not that, it's just that, then ev it's pretty fair for everyone. Because anyone who's got a computer, you mean? So it's open to anyone who's got, you know, a computer or a laptop at their disposal at this precise <laughs> moment. Anyway, uh, there's some cracking right. prizes, Rick, you'll be pleased to know, that obviously, once again, uh, Carl has, uh, managed to collect together an arbitrary assortment of, it's just uh, looking around, stuff. looking around the office. I, d I mean, where did you get these from? Did you just, did you, wh I mean, seriously, where did you get them from? Because it's right, such what, an arbitrary what, what, collection. What have we got there? I don't know what kind of a person would want these items. Right. <laughs> it's on. such an arbitrary selection, I don't know what kind of a person you'd be. Read them out, <laughs> what have we got? Well, uh, there's a, a another, uh, XFM compilation, which obviously you've obviously nicked from somewhere in the office. Yeah, it's Fair a good, good compilation, remix to uh, the album. an album here, which is a promo album with two pigs on the front, I think it's the Smashing Pump Friends Live. Yeah. <laughs> I can't be yeah, certain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, this is the album, didn't we give this one away last week? This well, is yeah. just a, an arbitrary compilation album, again, one of those kind of, Is uh, that the actual one you didn't send, Carl? No, no. Oh, I've got, got, got a couple I of got them. I've got a job lot of them. <laughs> <laughs> surprise, oh, surprise, The Office oh. on DVD, oh. um, which is ludicrous. <laughs> oh, I've then, seen it from here. What film? If it, like, listen, listen, uh, dear, dear XFM listener, it's half two. You know, it's just, uh, a bit windy out. You're probably gonna stay in this evening. Maybe do a bit of shopping. You, you got, and then uh, in a sense, even. Oh, what film would you really want? No, no, I mean, seriously, think if you could see one film, right? What would you want to DVD, see? DVD, one DVD, DVD. One of the big releases. Yeah, yeah, it's great. It's, put them out of their misery. See, they'll be watching this tonight if they're a lucky winner. It's the movie Stigmata. <laughs> Stigmata with <laughs> Patricia Arquette and Gabriel Byrne. <laughs> um, oh, so look forward that's to that. Great. That's the big one. That is brilliant. You're playing. Oh, look at Carl's face. He's actually offended because he puts. He's the only one that puts any work into this show, and he's got competitions. He's got educating Ricky, Rockbuster. He's got, the, got, got the song with a story. He's got a song with a story to come that he's like trapping. Oh, gone through him. I'm it's unbelievable. Oh, oh. Yeah. yeah, so you're playing for, uh, that collection of arbitrary goodies, plus the big prize this week, Stigmata, featuring Gabriel Byrne. Oh, oh dear. Uh, about Go a woman who I think, um, starts bleeding from the hands. It's a horror okay. film, I think. You'll have to be, uh, 18 or over I've to take it. part. It's not, it's not terrible. Sure. It's all, all right, but Is it better than, uh, Children of the Corn? <laughs> which was a big giveaway <laughs> last week. I haven't seen Children of the Corn. Go on yeah. then. Right, so, uh, so Next week, Teen Wolf 2. <laughs> Go on. Here's, Go on. Here's the, uh, And Tony Banks's own <laughs> solo <Yeah>. album, <laughs> Banks' <laughs> Statement. Tony Banks, remember, is the, uh, uh musician uh, from the much-loved Genesis, but we've got that album to give away. Alright then. So, uh, 
Right. To so win those exclusive prizes. Yeah, yeah, go on. Yeah. You've got to email in ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. I saw a sellotape dispenser out in the, uh, uh, there's a well, pair of want. gloves that I don't know who's out, but they're out there and they've been there for a week, so. Let's send those. A pair of well. gloves, a sellotape, a sellotape dispenser, uh, and Tony Banks's solo <laughs> album, <laughs> Bank <laughs> Statement. Yeah. Okay, go on. Right, first one. Yeah. Initials JT. Initials right. JT. What's the cryptic clue? Cryptic clue. At the moment, I'm in a river full of logs. Hold on. Yeah? JT, and what's the clue again? At the moment, I'm in a river full of logs. Full of logs? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, who could it be? JT, at the moment, I'm in a river full of logs. Yeah, go on, next right, one. second one, there's three of them you gotta get. Letter is W. Yeah. Uh, the clue, that lad's got bad asthma. That lad has got I've bad asthma. I've got that asthma. one already. I've got that yeah, one already. W. Yeah, W. Yeah. And okay. finally, the last one mm. is the letter C. Yeah. And, uh, the cryptic clue is um, Carl is one of these. <laughs> um, Mousetrap is that musical, isn't it? This isn't a clue, by the way. It is called Mousetrap, isn't it? There's not the, a musical. It's not a musical, it's but a it's a, it's a right, whodunit right, sort of yeah, thing, yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Um, <laughs> right, here's a clue. I saw that, uh, <laughs> Imagine that. <laughs> Imagine that on the real blockbusters. Yeah, mate. Bob Owen is going, oh, can we stop a minute? Oi, um, you with a nine teddy bears there. <laughs> Mousetrap, that's a show, isn't it? Isn't it? <laughs> I think so, Bob, yeah. Right, okay, here we go. Yeah, carry so, on. So, yeah, carry back on. Yeah, yeah. So, the letter is C, and yeah. the cryptic clue. Uh, I saw that mouse trap the other night, uh, but the heating in the, in the theatre was what? knackered. What? The heating, the heating in the theatre was knackered, right? Ruined it. Well, I've got that one already as well. Yeah? I mean, these are, the, the, uh, the first one's hard, but the, so, the first So, just a quick reminder, JT was the first one. At the moment, I'm in a river full of, uh, full of logs. Full of logs? Yeah. Okay. Uh, second one, W, that lad's got bad asthma. Uh-huh. Yeah. And the last one, l uh, C, I saw that mouse trap the other night, but the, uh, the heating in the theatre was knackered. Sure. And, uh, ruined the whole thing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> and, uh, ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk no. is the email address. You can win- I'm confused. Uh, the various treats, logs, including I'm in a stigmata. I'm in a Gabriel river Burton. full of logs. Yeah. I'm in a river full of logs. Well, we'll do it in about 20 minutes. Yeah, you've got to stay tuned right. for the answers. It's not, it's not the quickest, so don't go rushing and sort of messing it up. Think about it. And it's random email anyway, so uh -huh. there's no rush, all right? And uh, if you want to email, um, you're welcome to say, please do not send me the prizes, even if I win. <laughs> welcome to put that on there if you don't want that junk in your house. Right. The reason we're, you know, we usually sort of play a record out of an outbreak, don't we? Yeah. Carl is so concerned with his little competition, he hasn't got a record ready. Sure. Got one, got one, got one, got one. Okay. Right. Sorry, Larry. Yeah. Do you want to do a quick recap? a re quick recap? Yeah, oh, yeah, I can't yeah, bother yeah. to even just say it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really not, I'm not interested. I'm just not interested. Yeah, go on, Recap, quick. Still send your emails in. Uh, JT, it's some initials of a band, just in case you didn't hear it last week. If I said AK and an exploding pet, that would be Atomic Kitten. Yeah. Right? They know so, what a clue is. So, JT, at the moment, I'm in a river full of logs. Yeah. W, that lad's got bad asthma. And C, uh, I saw that mouse trap the other night. The heating wasn't working, it ruined the night. And, uh, yeah. yeah that's it. Ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. Some stuff. Stigmata. <laughs> <laughs> With Gabriel Byrne. <laughs> Richard Ashcroft. Check the meaning. Oh, I love that. That's brilliant. On XFM 104.9. Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant. Carl Pilkerton, who's uh, our producer. A, a proper producer Our now. Producer. No, but he's getting. It, but it's, it's more like it now, isn't it? Before he was someone who pressed the buttons. Then he was someone who pressed the buttons who we just made talk like mm. a, a performing monkey. I hear and he's going to be lured away by the Today program on uh, Radio Four because <laughs> <laughs> they've, they, they've lost their news editor. I think. Educating <laughs> Ricky, quite topical. Absolutely, it is, isn't it? Yeah. Is well, it? so when you say topical, what do you this, mean topical? this is uh, what, topical. Well, this happened ages ago. <laughs> yeah. Y your words, not mine. Have they got a, a Ricky who works there? We can look into that. Um, so, so Carl's set a competition. They've got to be given away, Rick. They've got to be given away. This um, is Rockbuster. We've uh, got, uh, obviously the big prize, Stigmata, this week. Yeah. Um, I'm not gonna give the prize to, uh, to Ira, I think it's Ira or Ira, but she, she or he, uh, emailed in, uh, the right answers and then said, if you could enclose the receipt for Stigmata, that would be much appreciated. <laughs> 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 uh, but I'm amazed by the number of responses we've had. And someone wants a copy of Tony Banks' uh, solo yeah. album, which I was mucking around, so we'd be better buy that in the week to give it away, because I think that'd be an amazing prize to give away. If you right, just give the clues Do again. the clues give and the then clues just give the answer. answer. Come on. What the answers are. Right, well, the one that everyone was struggling with was the first one. So yeah. I'll save that, so we'll go to the second one. W. Yeah. That lad's got bad asthma. Yeah, we know that. Yeah, what that was it? Weezer. Yeah. yeah. Good one, well done. Uh, the last one, uh, C, the clue was, uh, 
I saw that mouse trap the other day. Uh, the heating was knackered in the restaurant. Yeah. In the restaurant? In the, the theatre. Yeah. And uh, it ruined the night. Yeah, yeah. So it was a cold play, wasn't it? Yeah, that's a cold yeah. play. Yeah. And uh, JT, uh, at the moment, I mean. No, I can't river. think of this one. At the moment, I'm in a river full of logs. Well, I have to say there were some wrong answers. I, what was it again? It was Justin Timberlake. Justin Timberlake. Uh, we had some wrong answers that included Jethro Tull and James Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how that relates to it at all. I'm annoyed at Lake yeah. when he clearly said river. <laughs> I mean, that, that, that's the first thing that cropped up. Not I'm in <laughs> some water full of logs. At the moment, uh, yeah, I'm in some water full of logs. But he actually had to say river, <laughs> so not Lake. That annoys me. I mean, I didn't get it, fair enough. I should have worked it out. I should have tried to think like you. A lot of people obviously think like you, which is, okay. w which I'm, you know, worried about. But yeah, uh, <laughs> James <laughs> Taylor is great. <laughs> JT, just someone, James Taylor. Just yeah. I'm guessing. Yeah, so James Taylor works. Have we got a winner? Steve, he's uh, just gonna I, randomly I did, pick I, one. I did have a winner. I've just, um, I've just lost them. Oh. Needless to say, that lucky person. It won't be watching Stigmata tonight. Uh, just randomly get it. It's, it's just a draw, by the way. It's not the it's first just, one. Okay, I'll just, I'll I, just. I said to Carl in the break, I said, is the first one in? He went, no. I don't want a competition that relies on speed because I don't want to be rushed. <laughs> okay, uh. So randomly uh, click on just, someone. I'm just going to randomly click on one. Go on. Uh. They've not, they've not put an address. Well, what oh. we can do, we can email back and say, send us your address. Well, of course you can. I think if they haven't put an address. Well, no, t t t okay, read it out. All right, all right. Yeah. Chris Beaumont. Yeah, lucky Chris Beaumont Chris one. Beaumont will be watching Stigmata tonight <laughs> with a club of haagen if I'm not too much mistaken. <laughs> so, <laughs> so He'll be loving it. Well done to Chris. Need his yeah. address. Right, right then. That's the end of that competition. Right. Can we play a record or something? Well, or... we're on to another feature. Oh, what is this? <laughs> this one is... <laughs> Rick, were you not at the planning meeting? <laughs> What is this? Go on. This is, uh, that song's got a good story in it. Oh, is this that- oh, god. So tell us the rules. Yeah. Right, the rule is that it's songs that we play on the show every week, and there's a lot of music out that they just keep saying the same oh, thing Oh, just over tell- what is it? What's the song, the song with the story this week? a good story. What's the song with the story this week? Just say it. It's Gene Pitney, 24 Hours from Tulsa. Oh, well, I'm really sorry about this. If you're an XFM listener, we gotta listen to this. Go on. Well, do you know what it's about? Yeah, isn't he getting- trying to get back to his girlfriend? Yeah, he's been working away. Um, yeah. lives in Tulsa, he's but he works quite far away. Right. And he's Would this save us having to listen to the song? Well, it's, it's always good to sort of- Hear the, hear the story before you hear the story. It's <laughs> like, it's like, you know- sure. you, you I like this before a film. Yeah, no, go on, you, go on. You, might, you might read the book before you see the film, type thing. Yeah, so never in my case. <laughs> he's, he's working, he's working miles away, his missus is in, in Tulsa, he's driving back, yeah. And he can't wait. He's only about 24 hours away, and he's, I remember. He's, he's about 24 hours away, yeah. and he, uh, he's a little bit tired on the way home. He's thinking, oh, I don't want to look a mess for when me missus see, sees me. Mm. So he says, uh, right, I'll, uh, stay at a motel, get some energy and that, you know, for mm. when I, uh, see ya, have a Nature shave. Bar. So he yeah. pulls over at a motel, yeah. and he's locking his car up, getting his suitcase out of the back. There's a woman in the car park. He's like, <sighs> oh, she's all right. She looks at him, he thinks- Sex FM 104.0. I don't think the suitcase in the boot is mentioned in the song. I think that's maybe a 12 inch mix or something, I've not heard that. <laughs> well basically, right, oh, so no, I don't remember- I'll the play the record, for Christ's sake, let them listen to it! I don't remember him saying, cool, she looks like right, <laughs> <in> the record. <laughs> yeah, well done. Yeah, 24 hours from Tulsa, Gene Pitney, song with a story. Hmm. You yeah. are quite upset by the, the lyrics of that song, aren't you? I just think it's a bit annoying that, um, <laughs> right, he, he loved this woman. Yeah. Um, everything's going fine, he's only 24 hours away from home, I don't know how, what sort of distance he's done, but, <laughs> but he can't wait to get home. <laughs> and all it took was some woman in the car park to sort of- <laughs> Give him the eye. <laughs> give her the eye. And every, all the, all the, all the, like, the good times he's had with his missus go out the window. <laughs> and, uh, I don't know. That's the dangers of falling in love with a prostitute. <laughs> see, oh, God. What I like about it, I, though, is the fact that he's writing this to his ex-girlfriend. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like talking about rubbing it in. Yeah. Like he's kissing her and getting off with her. We haven't a while. Didn't time. take as long as Carl did explain it, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah but did, did you hear the very end? Because yeah. he's a loser, because he said, and he can never go home again. Yeah. yeah. So even though he's got this new girlfriend and that, yeah. 
You can't see his old mates He anymore. has falling in love with you. can't see his old mates anymore, he said. He can't see his old mates anymore. Yeah. I'll it's a sobering lesson. I'll tell you a song. <laughs> next time you stop at the Granada services, <laughs> 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 on the way back from, you know, Swansea, I'll be tell careful. You, there was a song that was a bit like that by Jim Reeves, um, probably at about the same time a little bit before, right? It was just called, um, just a hundred miles from Mary Ann, right? Mm. And, um, it was him and his horse going through the snow, and he right. was telling He stopped at a little chef. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's fancying another donkey. <laughs> yeah. No, but, um, it's really sad. It used to make me cry when I was little, cos he got there, right, and he, he wouldn't leave old Ben, the horse, mm. and then they, and he dies in the snow, and then so he dies in the snow. <laughs> it's gone again, you've gone again. <laughs> that, I get the same way teary-eyed with, uh, two little boys. Yeah. No, I don't like that. Why not? It's just... You think I'd leave you dying when there's room on this horse for two? Climb up here, Jack, we'll soon be flying back to the rank so blue. It was just like when they were playing with the little horse's head uh, when they were little, and he was a soldier and he helped him, and he returned the favour in a war, which to me is a bigger favour <laughs> than just letting him have a go on a hobby horse, but, uh, mm. a lot, lot, lot braver, if you, you know. Um, but, uh, yeah, last number one of the sixties as well. Christmas yeah. 1969. And it's, of course, based on fast. truth, that. It's actually, that's a history lesson right there. It is based it on is. fact. It's yeah. a famous, famous it person. I think it was Cromwell. Winston Churchill and Cromwell. Yeah, yeah it was Winston Churchill and Cromwell. Cromwell and Winston Churchill. <laughs> yeah, they were both lived ages ago, so they <laughs> lived at the same time. <laughs> yeah. Literally ages ago, so they lived at the same time. Yeah. Well, that's it then. Is it? Yeah. Were you listening to anything we were saying then, Carl? Did Did you understand any of that that me and Steve were just chatting you just about? Just saying then? that Rolf Harris uh, did a good song about right. someone who's got to carry on a horse. Right, and what, what, what was about the stuff about Cromwell and Winston? No. Which, what do you think that was about? Uh, I missed that. We're doing humour. We're doing a little bit of humour. It was a satire on you saying ages, not being specific. Do you did you, do you like that stuff we do? Yeah. <laughs> That's it then. <laughs> <laughs> it's like just a cat looking out a window at a dead m mouse or something. You can't. You can go come here, and it's just looking at the mouse it could eat. You want to you want to press the buttons and finish, don't you? Yeah. What are you gonna do? Play a record or? No, that's it. It's ads and that's it. <laughs> okay. Great. Goodbye. Well, what a wonderful ending. That was the when I was about. Foo Fighters. All my life on XFM 104.9, I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Steve Merchant, and of course Carl Pilkington. Ooh, have we got a shoe for you today? <laughs> oh, we? we got planned, oh, we got oh, planned. Oh, Go oh, loads of stuff and it, two hours of it. Right. And all the records. But specifically, what sort of stuff have you planned for us? Because I know you've been what working have you hard. What have you done? Because like, well, you know I've been busy this week, I've been yeah. house hunting, I've been uh, various things, but I know you've had the whole week off. Right. So what have you been up to, Mike? Go on, Carl. Carl, tell them what we've got, tell them what you've... What we've planned, all the stuff you've done. What have you got? But Rick, specifically, what have you come up with? Quick, 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 because quick, people I'm, are getting bored. Tell okay. us what you've- I've come, come up, up with, with, um, the music. Right. I've yeah. got, obviously that's- we've already planned that. We planned that last week, so that's all done. But what have you yourself contributed to today's show? I've got a- uh, I've got a- uh, um, mm -hmm. uh, a text message today from right. Ross Noble. You know, Ross Noble the comedian. Mm -hmm. Who's mm -hmm. on- who's on- oh, I've got news for you. Right. Like he says, ask Carl if he woke up with ladies' boobs, would he just put a dress on and live as a lady, or would he just be a man but with these boobs? Carl, it's a good question. <laughs> I know, I know that happened to Ross, so he's, <laughs> he's throwing that one out. At it you. did in a way because he ate pizzas for a yes, year, didn't he? he? Did, yeah, yeah. And he got a lovely pair of breasts. Yeah. Go on, probably lady boobs. Just find a, a loose fitting jumper, go to the doctor's. <laughs> What would you say to the doctor? How would you explain this phenomenon to the doctor? So you'd be you'd be happy with this because you believe in um, shite like no, no, you know no, happening. No, no. Go on, but what? it can happen because I told you a couple of weeks ago how what? it can happen. What? How you can wake up with breasts if you're a fella? I told you. Go on. Haven't you remembered? No, I, I, it's funny that, isn't it? Go on. Have you, Steve? No, I, I don't remember this. Did, well, did you tell us on air? Yeah. Um, it can happen if you go to Argentina and have a steak. <laughs> you can wake up with breasts. <laughs> Because, because I'm sure I'd have remembered Carl, that. Pull the other one. <laughs> <laughs> Look, he likes that. He likes that. Is that what you've come up with this week? <laughs> yeah, that joke. Yeah. Brilliant. Play a record. It's going to be a dynamite show. As long as you want. Oh, yeah. oh listen. One. Look, we're going to play. I'm going to play some classic tunes today. I'm going to educate the youngsters, Steve. Uh -huh. Right now, you've all heard of Lou Reed. You've all heard of Velvet Underground. But you know, have you heard of Venus in Furs, Carl? Shiny, shiny, shiny boots of leather. Venus in Furs. Velvet Underground. Mm. What a great start. What a classic I mean, song. They, they continue to sound fresh and contemporary. Yeah. Is this, do you know what that song's about, Carl? No. M and S. M and S. It's about M and S. You know that? Yeah. You know the shop? Yeah. It's all about that. Yeah. Whiplash, smile, and all that. All the things you can get at Marks and Spencer's. Shiny boots of leather. Yeah. Being whipped. 
Yeah. <laughs> I think that's a new division they've opened. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But we have got a great show lined up. Have we? we? No. Go we on. know we have. No, no, because we've got, um, uh, Rockbusters coming up. The great what, new looking quiz. Looking forward to that. Uh, that, that's, that's made the press. Has it? Um, yeah, 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 Um, uh, Frimley Tea Rooms uh, newsletter <laughs> mentioned it. Um, we've also got, um, That's Carl's local, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've also got, uh, Educating Ricky, where Carl educates, educates me. The, the one last week, a girl, right, she was deaf and she was having an argument with her mum and she pushed her and she hit her head and then she can hear again. Yeah. Don't know what I learned from that. No. It might be... It might be subliminal, someone might be going, it might, it might be a metaphor that I will learn from. Yeah, it's like you know, a I'm parable. Like, yeah, yeah, so, uh, look at his face. We, so, might uh, well, we might as well be talking Dutch, mightn't we, Carl? Say something quick, it's radio. I, I, I don't understand what you want from me. Oh, we're only joking. Right, so, educating Ricky, I, I've worked a bit harder this week, we've got some good stuff. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll give you the, 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 the teaser oh, headlines the later. The headlines in a bit. Yeah. We so you've got, got you've got rockbusters as well. Carl's having a bit of a stressful week because he thinks he's not appreciated because he's he, he's gets in at what time do you get in about eight or nine, don't you? About well, last yeah, I've been busy this week. I've been in at about half past eight in the morning. Yeah, and you've been leaving when? About uh, half past eight, nine o'clock at night. Yeah, and you're yeah. in Saturday. Yeah, I'm in now. You get paid, don't you? I'm busy at home. At a lot home. of people work late, Carl. A lot of people work twelve hour days. Why are you busy at home, Carl? What are you up to? Because we're trying to sort out a move. Uh huh. I've been trying to call around this morning to get someone to buy a, a suit on on a table from me. Yes. Um, well, we could put that appeal out now, couldn't we? If anyone wants to buy a futon or a table. Do you think of, a, a futon that Carl Pilkington slept exactly. on? How much are you, uh, you asking? <sighs> Whatever. Uh, well, you need to well, you've, you've got to You've got to take the two. I don't want, like, different people coming round and that. Sure. <laughs> you've got to buy a futon on a table. Uh, it's quite specific, isn't it? Someone <laughs> has to want a futon. Yeah. The, the it's specific uh, futon you're selling like on the table. made, isn't it? Alarm <laughs> clock and tea maker. This is yeah. futon and table. <laughs> yeah. Um, looking for about, about 100 quid. And yeah. it's good, it's good condition the food yeah. on. Yeah. yeah. Right, no stains on it. You haven't pissed no. yourself in the, st no. No, right. nothing. And what no. kind of table, what sort of table is it? Are we talking, are we talking like a table for a lounge, a, a dining table? No, for, for uh, like a computer and uh, just, uh, you know, something. Have you got any drawers? No there are there any drawers? drawers? There's no drawers. No, drawers. No, it's just a nice wooden table. Right, uh, is it, is it kind of oak or is it sort of an Ikea sort of thing? No, it's like oakish. It's okish. Yeah. Okay. So hundred quid. The food one is just it was just just the mattress and the and the and the the, the pallets. Yeah. Yeah, just but it's not. You see, you get cheap food on. So this is a good this, one. This is, is a good one. It's, it's how much would that have retailed for when I you purchased it? I think I paid about two fifty for right, it. Right, so it's a bargain. Well, for people. if you look at it, if you and how long have you had it? How old? How old this is it? This is a whole new strand. Well, isn't I'm it? thinking. I this don't is think great... it's legal. I think I don't well, think we should. I'll use... tell you what I'm interested in, in Rick. Right. It's just just finding out a little bit about the sort of thing that Carl's got in his home. You know. I'm interested in if people will. Phone up to spend a hundred pounds just to go round Carl's house. No, yeah. no, 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 I won't be. No, what? No, no, they've come here. I'll bring it to work, and they can pick it up here. Don't I'm going to bring on. a futon so and a table to work. Don't you ride a bike? So hold on, we need someone with a van now. <laughs> <Yeah>. So we <laughs> need. Is, is anyone who wants? To, but they're not allowed around your house. Can they meet you next door? Someone with a van. <laughs> <laughs> could they meet you in your street somewhere? Hold on. Could they meet? What you with you, a, they, what about the little Chinese fellow that lives across the road on the two bouncers and the old woman who's dead reading a book? Can can could you meet him somewhere? I've got an idea. What about if you meet at the end of your street? You blindfold them, <laughs> like they do when <laughs> when when terrorists <laughs> take the negotiator to the uh, yeah to the, the hideout, the, the big cheese, and um, and so you could do that, and in, and so. So, you know, they, they could piece together maybe where you live with from sounds. the sounds and stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, what about that, Carl? That's, that's just a great idea. Yeah. And would you sign the futon for people, do you think? Would you, uh, would you give them a little signature? Or maybe you at least a bill a pallet, of purchase. Couldn't you? you could sign a pallet. <sighs> yeah. Or, I could try and get work to buy it off me and then we give it away for Rockbusters. Do you think they do that? Do you think they do that? I think they'd probably do it for Foxy with his, with yeah. his big well, imagine how big that but would Imagine be. if he wanted to sell his hog. Yeah. That is a motorbike, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's been selling his hog for money for years, <laughs> yeah. hasn't he? Oh dear. So right. well, we'll see about that. So, so uh, if interest. people are interested, maybe email uh, Ricky at xfm.co.uk if you're interested in buy, futon buy Carl's and, futon and, uh, competition. One hundred pounds O N O. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what gear have we got? Anyway? I never knew what that meant. O N O. I, I thought it went sort of oh, on, no. the nose. Oh, no. on the nose. Oh, no. <laughs> on the nose. On the nose. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, we got. Well, tell me what we got, got to give away, Steve. So, please. actually, I have to say, you've, 
Dominic sold yourself this week. Richard Ashcroft's single coming up soon after this. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> when have you, since when have you taken to talking like that? <laughs> it does amuse me. <laughs> Go on. Um, this is actually, this is a nice little collection here. This is a three DVD set. Uh, David Attenborough's, uh, The Life of Birds, Trials of Life and Life in the Freezer. That's a good one, isn't it? That's a selection of, uh, animal-based documentaries. Yeah. Uh, we've got, uh, this what is best at? Well, absolutely. This I is when he goes off the board and does, like, uh, fast cars. This is, uh, very, very good indeed. This is, uh, a best of David Bowie compilation. It is a very good, just, just a uh, proper one. Not the, not the rubbish ones that no one else wanted. This is a brilliant compilation yeah, it's got of the Bowie. Right? on there. Uh, we've got this. Now, this looks like a madness. Oh, no, 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 no. It's far worse than we could possibly have imagined. It, it seems to be some kind is it of tie-in with the Our House Madness musical. And it's got a, 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 a cast of 20 people who wanted to be singers. Uh, I c it's tricky to find out. I can't figure out if it's the originals or not, but needless to say, if you're a Madness fan, I'm sure that'll be an absolute treat. Yeah, you love treat. that, you love that. You'll uh, love that. now I know that, uh, Steve, I wouldn't mind that DVD collection myself, <laughs> I can't. That's it's true, the giveaways that, no, we can't. We I'm can't. talking of great compilations. What about this? It's Country Legends. I'm oh, seeing on the front right. there Glenn Campbell, we've got Dolly Parton, we've got, um, what should we call it? On the, on the car, on the front What should we call it? <laughs> <laughs> from, from a great performer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Jake, uh, what should we call it? Oh, excellent. Some great yeah. hits from him. So, uh, yeah. that's there as well. Well, that's what collection. That's, uh, same XFM Compilation again, easy to get hold of. If but the big one, the, the big one, the film that Carl oh, um, picks every week, the, the DVD big one. movie this week. Don't Carl. go out tonight if you've got a DVD player and a television set because no? you'll be staying in and watching this fantastic film. It will tear your soul apart. It's Hellraiser, <laughs> the <laughs> original <laughs> Hellraiser. Bear in mind, it has been on Channel Four and Channel Five and on most cable channels <laughs> since it came out. <laughs> but if you haven't seen it, if you're one of the only people who has not seen it, <laughs> and of course you have to be over eighteen to play, then you can win Hellraiser. That is fantastic. Well, uh, pl play, a, play a song, Carl. We'll come okay. back to that. More, more great stuff. Indeed. The competition coming up later. Email only, isn't it, Carl? Yeah, that's it. Futon. <laughs> Futon's still available. <laughs> Richard Ashcroft, check the meaning. Well, Carl, you're chuffed, aren't you? It's what's happened? Right? What's just happened? Tell the listeners what's this happened. This is sparked off a bit. Steve's just called up. He's, uh, putting an offer for the futon and yeah. the table. Yeah. Um, I think he wanted to, he definitely wanted it, but I said, look, you know, think about it over the weekend. Yeah. Give well, you're not a hustler. No, well, I'm not, I'm not gonna rush him into it because once he's got it, he can't bring it back. I'm not messing about. No. Um, so. The bloke you... said, uh, what sort of wood is it? Carl said, sort of, uh, sort of like a light brown colour. He went, what, beach coloured? <coughs> Carl went, depends what beach you're on. <laughs> Which was nice. <laughs> you do understand there's a wood that's called, called beach. beach. Uh, well, well he's, he's happy, he likes the sound of it, nice sure. plum cover. <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna be, uh... <laughs> yeah. It's Carl going, that'll go with Magnolia, he walks him out, he's yeah. just going, I'll tell you what, nice, look nice in your spare bedroom. It was like a, well, he an did, episode he did, of Changing Rooms, it was like listening to an episode of Carl. He did the deal in, in under three minutes, wasn't it? Yeah, was pretty song, good, didn't he? phoned you about halfway through in that song, so, yeah. he worked pretty quick, Carl, yeah. I gotta say. Yeah. It's yeah. your manx scally way. I'm sure we're not allowed to do this, though. No, I think it's highly criminal. Yeah. Have well, you got anything? Are you <laughs> Well, I'll tell you, I am moving shortly, so I mean, I might, I might come in next week. I could have a couple of. I threw away a desk the other day. I got to get rid of a bed, um, a chair, because you know I'm pretty tall. <laughs> this is so pathetic. Yeah. <laughs> when I when I moved up to London, my dad said, "Well, you want to be careful because I mean, the seating in a lot of these London pads is bad. Seating very low back, fashionable, isn't it? Fashionable chairs and stuff. You're a big guy, six foot seven. You need like a decent chair." We went to a shop. It was like a second-hand furniture yeah. shop, right? Yeah. I bought this chair, very high back. <laughs> Why did you buy <laughs> that? I bought, you bought a solo. I love yeah, that. It's just a chair, so I could sit in my room it? and watch TV. But was it a soft chair or was it a wooden it was chair? Kind of like a sort of, uh, it was, well, let me explain, because it's kind of like an armchair, but it's kind of got wooden arms. So I get this chair, I bring it up to London, and I say, this is a great that. chair, this is a wonderful chair. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be watching TV, everyone else is Pipe. having agony. Pipe, you know, yeah, smoking I've got jacket. chair, yeah. right? And I brought it up, and someone went, they looked at it, they went, isn't that an orthopedic chair? <laughs> and I looked at it again, right, and I realised it's kind of white cleanable. <laughs> It's made of some kind of fabric <laughs> that allows you to just mop it down with a wet what? cloth. Why? Because I think it came from an old people's home. Oh. You know when you see like old people oh, in some no. kind of social room in an old people's home, yeah. just sat watching a little crappy old TV, and yeah. they can you can wipe everything clean. It was it's oh. one of those chairs. Oh, that's fantastic. So if anyone's maybe they've got an elderly Didn't you relative keep slipping off. 
<laughs> just goes like, and it's also the most uncomfortable chair I've ever, because unless you've got chronic back pain, <laughs> it just, it's, it's just the most uncomfortable chair. <laughs> it makes you sit bolt upright, well, if not slightly forward. You've done a good sell on it. I think, uh, <laughs> either the phones are going mental, well, how much do you want for that, Steve? If you've had a recent accident, or you've got a disabled, or, or um, or uh, someone in, in the house who's just, uh, elderly, <laughs> then, um, then you might want to get in touch. I'm happy to, you can take that off, man, so for uh, 25 wrong. quid. This is so wrong. 25 quid, I'll, oh, I'll take that. Oh. Maybe you're setting up an old people's home, you know, it's a little <laughs> yeah, pet, pet project. <laughs> yeah, you don't get a lot of grant. We can help. <laughs> exactly. We can help. I mean, um, because though know, Steve's such a high flyer, I mean, if it really is a good cause, they just give it to you. Well, <laughs> <laughs> let's not rush into everything. Anything, really. I like to assess each case. You know, yeah. But sure, so, yeah, certainly, sure. if you are a charity, then then I'm mean, okay for twenty quid. I can t you take off mine for twenty quid. <laughs> Um, <laughs> but otherwise, 25, and I tell you, it's, it's in a good condition, because I haven't really sat on it. I've quit off if you really are You know, and, 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 and there were some stains, I've wiped them clean. Uh, you know, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, oh dear. Well, that's fantastic. So we've, uh, we've, yeah, well, uh, I'll tell you what we should, we should resuscitate next week, Swap Shop. The more we kind of swap uh, shop. I, I, honestly, there's it's a, a great format. But there's a couple of things I've always wanted to, to get back out. Swap Shop is one of them, and the other one is Superstars. I don't remember Superstars. Superstars was great because it was like the people of their time. So you'd have like people like nowadays you'd have you'd have Beckham and uh, uh, um, what's his name? Uh, it was a tennis player. Is it? Really Rosetsky. Yeah, Rosetsky. Yeah, yeah. And they they have to compete. So all these people have to compete at the, each other's sports. And they have to choose seven out of ten sports. And there's a leaderboard and there's a big final. Oh, old Keegan came off his bike. It, it's it's Brian not, Jack's it's not like it's to win it. No, no, it's real sports. It's, real proper, it's sports. proper sports. It's hundred meters, tennis, weightlifting, all the real sports. You you can't do your own sport. Well, I know you're a pretty big uh, guy now in in British TV. You're a bit of a big shot. What do you reckon? Pull some strings. Let's get it back on <laughs> Let's there. Get it back Superstars. On there. Superstars. Sounds fantastic. Me, Johnny Vegas, Peter Kay. <laughs> The bigger fella, I think <laughs> maybe <laughs> the comedy comedy superstars. Um, what we got next? We've got a bit of Springsteen, haven't we? Let's play Springsteen. This is uh, a track from his current album, The Rising. A lot of people Brilliant. think Bruce is a bit M O R, a bit middle of the road, or whatever. But you know, I just think piss off. Yeah, <laughs> I just think screw you. Let's I just play think it. yeah, get lost. Oh, you. Yeah. Imagine this: you're open top g caddy. Yeah, you're just going around country. Route 66. You just you just you're going home maybe for Thanksgiving. Yeah, to see yeah. your folks. That's just just turn up the radio if you are. Play the tune. Probably on. not. Though. That just reminded me when I brought a. So stop it for a second. <laughs> just realised when I brought when I brought a woman back shambles. and she saw the orthopaedic chair. <laughs> <laughs> you bring a woman back to your pad. Oh, it's embarrassing. <laughs> and the harness. Yeah. And exactly uh, <laughs> the truss. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> just again. Can you give me those two splints? I'm sorry. <laughs> those two splints there. <laughs> well, I've got to go. Have you? Is this a potty under the bed? <laughs> Yes. The Rising title track from Bruce Springsteen's current album, Great The Rising. Track. Yeah, it's good. Great. Track. It's that, that feeling of it's melancholy and uplifting. We've had quite a, an interactive show so far because we've got a, a call that Superstars is coming back. Mm. It's due to come back in the BBC schedules, which is. Great news. Apparently, was Steve Redgrave is one of them. I just don't think will professional footballers be allowed to take part these days, though. When they're on fifty works. grand a week, you, you can't really have them falling off bikes and, uh, and their ankles. Can't yeah, you? Yeah, McCaskill last night. <laughs> Yeah, I'm celebrity thick, love you. Ian McCaskill. <laughs> oh, he fell off his bike about three it. times, didn't he? Oh, if it, did, did you see celebrity thick? No, I haven't seen it. There was a great moment where they had to go into the, a thing called a bod pod, and you sit in it, and it's quite space age, and it, and it analyzes you, and it tells you percentage body fat. Now, I think, um, men are meant to be about, sort of, uh, 15 to 25% body fat, women are meant to be like about 20 to 30 body fat. And they all went in there, and, um, it went in there and it said, uh, Ian McCaskill and it came up, uh, 34% body fat or whatever, slightly overweight. Uh, I'm gonna come to the 38% overweight. Then it went, um, the other one, um, 45% uh, body fat, obese. Then it went, Jono. Uh, Did it say, I don't want to tell you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it went, uh, 50, 50, 50 percent body fat, um, uh, very obese. Then Rick Waller was sat in there, and it came up 60 percent body fat. And I wanted it to come up slug. <laughs> God. But it came up more with it 60, you are 60 percent fat. So, so 60 percent of him is yeah, fat? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, sixty percent of his entire makeup. That's extraordinary. It is. Well, you yeah. know my feelings about Wallace. Well, then let's go on to. Well, that's I mean, the reason I don't you know, watch the show. Actually, I do feel a bit sorry for him. I mean, he is, he is. I think he is trying. Although the fella there um, thinks he's not trying, so I don't know who to believe. Steve. Sure. Yeah, I don't know yeah, who to believe yeah. Wallace, and he does get pains in that, and he is a bit. Yeah. The problem know. is, right? He does like his food. Yeah, we we all like our food. But if he didn't do the exercise, he wouldn't be as hungry. 
and he might not get fat. This is a whole new nutritional outlook. <laughs> Absolutely. So you're saying don't exercise and carry on eating and that's, that's interesting. <laughs> no, Can I, no, let, me, no, let, let me write that one down. I will send that to the British... <laughs> nutritional uh, organisation. Yeah, no, that's good. Carl Pilkington. <laughs> okay, well, no, no, that's a, that's no, a good... I'm no doctor or anything. <laughs> Whoa! Yo, come wait, 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 Stop wait, wait, being so bloody modest. <laughs> Please. You are a doctor. You're you just, are, yeah. you're, you're not, you're not a doctor, seriously, you're not, you didn't qualify, but <laughs> that's interesting. He dropped out early or? That's mad. That is mad. I mean, you, you're as good as doctor, you just, you just didn't get the paperwork or whatever. You just didn't yeah. turn up for the exam. Yeah. Yeah. He was just saying that Bruce Springs him, uh, um, depressed him a little bit. Yeah. Cause it reminds him of when he worked in the supermarket. And, uh, I said, it's funny how a song can do that, take you right back there. He went, yeah, nothing else can do that. I said, well, actually, smell is the most evocative sense because smell is linked to memory in the brain and he went yeah they probably said that before music though <laughs> <laughs> and now all signs are going we, got, we better revisit this because there's music now yeah, yeah. we've had this theory knocking around for you know 10 i went to see bruce you'll be pleased to know i just want uh, the fans of the show to know that i did make it to bruce springsteen's concert it. last week and uh he started with that song we just played and it was dynamite i mean he never let up Almost three hours, he rocked the joint. He's 53, he was sliding across, it was pure rock and roll. Pumping our fist, sliding across the floor on his knees, he was jumping on the piano. It was real Jerry Lee Lewis rock and roll. And uh, it was dynamite. And um, I just was looking around though, and, and when I am the trendiest person at a gig, oh, dear. then I'm in trouble. Do you know what I mean? And there was some of the people there. I imagined, you know, on Amazon.com, um, it says like, people who bought X also bought Y. Yeah. And I yeah. think people who bought tickets for Bruce probably bought tickets for Mark Knopfler. Yeah, I'd Dave Gilmore. Yeah, Pink Floyd without I Pink know. Floyd. But then Stevie there's, Nicks. But there's also yeah. But then there's also you know the mon all the monsters. Right, they probably buy stones when they visit. You know. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. And probably Tina it's the Turner. blue wash jeans. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's the small waistcoats. Yeah, over a denim shirt, plaid plaid shirt. Maybe yeah. sort of like Timberlands. Nothing wrong with Timberlands. I'm not. That's libelous. Sure. No. Sure. See, I've done it again. Yeah. But so it was hell getting out. I couldn't find. I mean, I I went to the tube and it was a nightmare because some of the tubes weren't running. I just said my friend, I'll sort this. You know, the, the stormed off trying to find a cab. Couldn't find a cab. Wandering around Wembley, just livid. I mean, fuming because I couldn't find a cab. Just I was screaming because I was going. I've got money. I'm on the radio. I've had a t TV show. I've got the cash. I'm willing to spend it. There's yeah. no one who can help me get home. And I was. I've I've seen him shout this in Brewer Street, yeah. just to stand in the middle, go on. And I was thinking to myself, what would you have done there? Because in the end I just sat in a little calf, had something to eat. But you, I mean, if you couldn't get a cab, what would you have done? Just because there's a couple of, I was looking, there's a couple of hotels <laughs> near Wembley. I was thinking you'd have just checked in. Yeah, and just then stayed till the morning. Yeah, when, when there's a cab, let me know. But I was thinking, because you were thinking of going, would you have booked a cab beforehand? Uh, yeah. Would you have, would you have thought to do that? Yeah, I'd have got a cab there and I'd have booked a cab Wasn't somewhere. Wasn't the, uh, one of the helicopters just took you back home? Yeah. Oh, he's oh, having a dig, isn't he? He's having a laugh, isn't he? Why are Yeah. Yeah. Play the ads. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dead in Vegas. Scorpio Rising. Featuring the voice of, is it Noel Gallagher? Liam, isn't it? Is it Liam? Sounded a bit like him. Liam, yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. Right, isn't it? Excellent, yeah. Right, okay, let's, uh, let's get this show well and truly on the road. Um, we better start, what, ed educating Ricky next, Carl? What have you got for me? I can't wait for learning. I need learning. I need education. We should just teach explain, something. uh, obviously, for those that have just tuned in, Carl, uh, Try to teach Ricky three things each week. Based on the pun title. And yeah, each of them, uh, each of them, just to tantalise Ricky, is, yeah. um, abbreviated into some kind of headline. It, a cryptic a clue involving a, involving a pun. So what have you got for us oh, this yeah, week? They, what's are, the... they are really cryptic this week. Okay. Yeah. Um, first story, little headline, is, um, don't worry about him, he candle it. <laughs> he candle it? Yeah. Sounds a bit like he can handle it, but it's yeah. not. What do you? Uh, second one. <laughs> I'm uh, I'll get a lobe of this. I'm, I'm <laughs> get a lobe of this. <laughs> <laughs> this is classics. Who yeah. can forget? Get a lobe of this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Coming soon. And, and stocking eight gallon water, man. <laughs> Go on. Second one. Yeah. I'm committed to this treatment. I'm mm. committed to this treatment. Yeah. All right, tantalizing. Yeah. And the last one. Um, uh, the police are causing a bit of a stare. Oh. <laughs> oh. The way he looks when he says it. I wish, yeah. that, oh, I wish we could say, can't we get Carl on telly? Oh. There's got to be a way. There's we can. Uh, uh, with all the cable channels, anyone can get on telly these days. Let's right, get, let, so let's, let's phone up, let's get you on choice or something. Just what, a little, just Carl. What, 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 what are you going for? Oh, he can handle it, I think. Don't worry about him, he can handle it. He can yeah. handle it. Okay, Sorry, yeah. Let's, yeah. let's hear this one. Right, are you familiar with the, uh, the phrase, burning the candle at both ends? Yeah. Do you know how it's come about? I know a man right. who does. I, I assumed that it was to get more light. 
in the room. Oh, well, that worked. Well, they'd put it sideways and light both wicks, so out of one candle they could get no. two. No, go on. No, what it is. Oh, it, is, it means, uh, it means you're, you're staying, you're doing too much, you're staying up too much, right. you're not getting enough sleep and you're- Well, years ago. Yeah. Um, when they didn't have light bulbs and that. Oh yeah, what year is this? Literally, quite, literally ages ago specifically. Yeah, quite a bit back. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, didn't have light bulbs and that, so they used to have candles when in When did the light bulb come in? Cause I, I can't remember the moment. <laughs> I, phew, don't know. Okay, go on. So, um, yeah, so they've, they've got a light bulb. You're not me, well, you wouldn't know, you're a, doc you're a doctor, you're not a historian, go on. Uh, and people who worked a lot of hours, yeah. How many? Literally lots? They get up early in the morning because they have to be up early. Yeah. And it's dark outside so they light the candle. Sure. And they wear it out a bit. And then they'd be getting in late as well. Yeah. And like, they'd be like, oh, it's dark, I'll have to light the candle again. <laughs> and the burning candle at both ends of the day. So that's where the saying comes from, burning the candle at both ends. So, all right. That's a uh, little lesson. Yeah, yeah lesson good. one. Okay. Uh, <laughs> can I have? No, well, no, I, you, you can't. Have you can't one rush yet. into them, Rick. You've got to. I've got uh, to soak you've in got, that. You've got to soak that one in. Any questions for Carl off the back of that? What do you think? So, so, so people were. I mean, basically, where this comes from is people were <laughs> <laughs> literally burning the candle at both ends of the day. day. Sure. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> so we've still got. Go on. I'm committed to this treatment, and I can't wait. This is like this is like Christmas Rick, Eve for me. It's it. like Christmas. I've got to open another present now. No, I'm afraid we've got to save it. But Rick, listen. Um, we often get a lot of email correspondence during sure. the show, Rick, uh, which I don't I don't sort of pass on to you because I mean you're busy, you're planning the show and stuff. Sure, you've got sure, a lot of ideas. Sure. You've got music and stuff to worry yeah. about. So I check the emails, and we get a lot of response. A lot of people that obviously uh, you know want to give us feedback. Uh, just a sample one. Um, from Richard Anderson, he's just uh, emailed us in here, Rick, because uh, he's been listening to the show. He says, Ricky, your show is appalling. Um, are you actually aware you're on the radio or has someone just secretly stuck a microphone on you? That's from Richard Anderson. So, that's, the, that's typical of the kind of feedback Rick we're getting <laughs> really? today. Really? So, it's that um, good, is it? So that's, that's the kind of, yeah, high positive praise that we're getting, so, uh, I'm, I'm, I was, I'm glad Anderson's anything. listening because I wanted him. I yeah, was, no, I mean, I, I was gunning for him as a fan. I was worried that early, early, early on in our career, so, uh, but, I, think, uh, I think he's hooked now, though. But thanks, uh, Anders, for <laughs> getting in touch. Good work. He's getting through it for Hellraiser, though, isn't he? Yeah, well, that's still to come. Well, still, still, to come. still to come. What are we playing? Uh, a little bit of old dirty bird. I can't. I can't say the word. It's offensive. Old old Is it bollocks? Is it old dirty bollocks? <laughs> no, 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 no. What is no, it? No. Old, dirty. old dirty. Old dirty big cock. <laughs> no. What is it? What is it? Yeah, I can't tell you. It's okay. offensive. It breaks up. Brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. Funny word, isn't it? <laughs> it's it's really funny word, what other it? funny I words know. are there, Although Carl? XFM's a funny word, I just yeah. say the letters out because mm. the word doesn't make sense. Just, uh, let me just check Richard Anderson's email again, just remind myself of- Go on. Uh, Ricky, your show is appalling, Richard Anderson. Thanks. What I like about, uh, Dickie, <laughs> Dickie Anders <laughs> is that he's obviously so angry, he's so annoyed by the show <laughs> that he's bothered to email just to get the venom out. <laughs> Otherwise, you'd just think he'd switch over. Well, he's you know, obviously so annoyed, he's he just switched on the computer. He knows how to hurt someone Not as well. Exactly. He's really taking the time out to, I'm to show his disapproval. I'm giving up. <laughs> I'll tell you what, though, it, can't, it, it is pretty hard to listen to. What, this? Yeah. I've listened back to the tape that when you're, ma when you're making that thing for the best of. Yeah. And I. I mean, I sounded like Albert's Taplock. I sa I'm really sounded like some sort of punch drunk stroke victim. And I, I oh, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah. I don't remember myself like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. so, uh, yeah, I do apologise. It's, it's not a great planned show, slick word. Of articulate <laughs> no, sentence, no, no, is it? No, but no, I mean, no, then no. who is? But I think I mean, there's so many shows that are, you know, nowadays on radio. I think there's, there's a lot of stuff that's heavily formatted, you know, and there's with, you know, I don't know, presenters who are professional and have got some sort of degree of talent yeah. and ability to sort of string a sentence. Together. You know, I'm thinking Chris Moyles. Yeah. Predominantly. Yeah. But I mean, I'm bored with those, those yeah, people. Exactly. You know, I, I think we need a little bit of, a little bit of Carl hey, in our life. I'm just thinking, actually, I just suddenly struck me. If you want to get rid of your, um, your furniture. Got a buyer. You've already got a buyer. Because go buy. if, if there's only st other stuff, what I we uh, we were clearing some stuff out of our place recently, and we just dumped some stuff outside on the street because we were going to take it and, and take it to the tip later. Just dump some stuff outside, and I have never seen so many people come out of the woodwork scavenging through our garbage. It was incredible. They were like zombies. Well, that's what I was they saying. They were like flies around. Uh, it but was when I said crazy. to Carl, when I said to Carl, 
Uh, That's what you should just do. Just don't buy it because it'll get taken. When he went, he said, he said, do you think I asked enough under it? I went, yes, definitely. He went, oh, what could I ask? I said, no, don't do that. I said, because you'll end up having to pay the council to take it away. He said, I wouldn't. He said, I'd rather just dump it and let a little homeless fella have it. And <laughs> then he went, and where's the little homeless fella sitting at the desk? Can <laughs> 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 you imagine, right, that I walked past, he sat outside Hearts, right, the little 24-hour shop, yeah. and sat outside there and he goes, have you got any change? Nigga, I can do better than that. Yeah, here's a chair and table. Here's, here's a, a futon. futon. Yeah. A futon, no less. Not your boring bed, but a trendy, yeah. Well, but the thing is, I, the amazing the number of people that would stop to look at our junk. What? There was a car driving by with a family and kids, perfectly respectable, just driving past, you know, on the way to somewhere, stopped, got out, got the kids out of the car, come on kids, let's just look through this junk. But I like the you idea You said we were going to Walton Towers, yeah. Dad. No, no, sorry, no time. We're not oh, going to the zoo, this let's look through this rubbish. We're not going looking through people's rubbish Put again, Put these gloves we? on, look through this shit. Ow! That's a yeah, needle. That's a needle. It was, I mean, who does that? It was like a Saturday afternoon. Kids were just gonna go and look through some rubbish. And one guy, this is the most incredible one, one guy, I caught him going through the bins as I came, as I came in. I said, alright, what are you doing? He was one of those homeless guys who likes to remain dignified. Why did you say, what are you doing? Well, because it was my house, I had to go part, I had to squeeze past him. He wasn't in your him. kitchen. He was in our front garden. Oh, was he? Yeah, going through everything. He tore in the bags open, he was going through it. I said to him, what are you up to? He went, oh yeah, just looking at the stuff. Don't, don't worry, I'll just, I'll, I'll clean it all up afterwards, just looking for a few odds and ends, blah, 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 blah. I said, oh well, you can take what you want, you know, it's all going away. Yeah, thanks very much, thanks. Yeah. So he went off, right, I didn't think anything of it. I was walking past the shops the following day, there's a little sort of, uh, kind of 7-Eleven, right, I was walking past. I thought, oh, that's interesting, a Gil Scott heroin album for sale. And I looked. I thought, wait a minute, this is all our rubbish. And the guy had set up like a little car boot sale outside the 7 Eleven on the pavement. He'd taken our junk, he'd marked on prices. There's like an old RAC book from 1976 that had been lying in the house, a yellow pages. You know, and he'd marked up the How prices. How much is the yellow pages? So I'm glad you asked. What year was 50p, that? 50p, I snapped it up. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that's a bargain. <laughs> and um, it was incredible. He had the cheek of just selling our junk. Outside en Enterprise car. You, you, you do that. What do you used to do? You used uh, to sell flowers. I sold flowers. I yeah. sold, uh, sold fizzy drinks at school. Did you? Yeah. What made that you made? It was soda stream, yeah. Yeah. Made, made some, uh... Well, of course, when you were doing your Pilkies making music, your disco, yeah. you used to go into mum's bedroom and could find a pair of tights and a cigar. Yeah, they, yeah, they'd be prizes. Uh, yeah. Did your dad used to smoke cigars in tights, or, or your mum? <laughs> Which one of them? He's just... It's gone. Right, look, let's, let's, uh... Yeah, we're educating Ricky. No, no, no. That's all teasing that. Uh, Rockbusters. Well, I think we should play a tune and come back with Rockbusters. Oh, the show's falling down. We were going so well, and we, it's just the energy, isn't it? The first hour we got through. I'm just and in good spirits. Is this, this still good? Is it this I'm show? Enjoying it, yeah. Yeah, it's time. still good. Is it? I'll just let me just check because uh, just check what Richard Anderson thinks of it. <laughs> good evening, Anna. <laughs> no, he thinks it's appalling. He, <laughs> no, no, uh, the Dixter thinks it's appalling. So uh, we should what play we, a tune because he prefers the music. That of Aqualung. Oh. Aqualung. Aqualung. Rockbusters next. I like that. That's great, isn't it? Aqualung. Good times gonna come. Well, Carl, we've got loads of ideas. We've got emails coming left, right and centre. I think you've caused quite a stir. I think you've turned this show around, to be honest. I'm being that honestly. Yeah, no, you've done really well. You're actually acting a bit like a producer, isn't he? Mm. And, mm. uh, you're coming through in your own right. Yeah. Um, we've had a great suggestion. We've we? had a great email here. Let me this, just listen check, to this, Carl. Uh, let me just check. Listen, listen to this. This is from, uh, Jeff Dunn. He's a big fan of the show and he's just had a genius idea. He's saying, you're moving house, Carl. Why don't Ricky and I come round? We can do a live outside broadcast from your flat. It's we genius. can observe from your kitchen those weirdos that live opposite. Yeah. We can just maybe just wander around, just see the kind of place that you've got, you know, see, maybe check out your record collection, your clothes, what you've got in the bathroom. It'd be amazing. Your futon. It'd be like Louis Theroux. Wouldn't it? We'll be Louis through. Come on, Carl, this is a dynamite idea. Nah. Why? I, I don't want you coming around making a mess and that. We'll, we'll make, make a mess. We'll make a mess. We'll take our shoes off. When, when have I ever made a mess in the studio? Yeah, exactly. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. Do you know what I mean? We're not going to make a mess. What? What? We're not going to have anything with us. But what's in it for anyone? Well, it's just a fascinating insight into yeah, you. Yeah, but right, when I see that little Chinese kid across the road who's dancing <laughs> about in his underpants, yeah. that's in the evening, yeah. right? He's not going to be doing that on a Saturday, <laughs> so you'll be disappointed there. Sure. <laughs> that, old, that old woman. But you could at least show us the oh, room no, in which he really, dances. Yeah, when you say little Chinese kid, he's a 35 year old man, isn't he? Yeah, well. I yeah, you know, you know, you know. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, that, that's beside the point. You know, we'll find our own amusement. 
No, I don't, I don't, and the, the w woman downstairs has got a baby and if we make loads of noise and it's, that gets We're stressed out. We're not gonna out. make noise, are we? Just gonna have a conversation in your flat. Have a cup of tea. Yeah, but if we do an OB, we need to get like a car outside with a big aerial on it and well, the parking's bad around our way. What do you mean you have to do a, what do you mean? To do a outside broadcast. Can't they put in an ISDN line just for the day? No, no, because it'll make a mess of the wall and I'm, I've, I won't give me deposit back. <laughs> so <laughs> we'll leave that. <laughs> Thanks for the idea. You know he's <laughs> going around painting all the little holes uh, to get his deposit back <laughs> in, the, in the wall. <laughs> he wants to get his deposit back. He's probably cost him about 400 quid redecorating. <laughs> 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 Let's remind people, Carl, of the, uh, the prizes for Rockbusters this week. It's right. dynamite stuff. We've got the David Attenborough DVD Nature Collection. We've We've got a number of CDs, The Best of David Bowie, we've got a Madness CD, not quite sure whether that's songs, uh, from the musical or, or their original tunes. Uh, Country Legends, two CDs there of, uh, great country music. Brilliant. And the, uh, remix to XFM compilation. Plus, of course, the big movie prize this week. Um, Hellraiser! Hellraiser! If you haven't seen it already, then I assume you <laughs> have never seen a film before. <laughs> Because I don't know if there's anyone who hasn't seen Hellraiser. <laughs> but obviously you have to be above 18 to join. Uh, Come to on then. Play the Come on then. So, How um, long would you want to be around for? Is this just for the... Just for the show. A couple of hours. Two hours. You just get the desk in there. Mm. A live OB. We could check out the futon. We could sing it's it crazy. Check the fault in, right? Yeah. Oh, you might have sold that by now. I thought we could have someone it? come round and buy it live on air. Yeah. Yeah. Think about it. Think about it. Think about it. It's great. Uh, great what's, uh, how, did, how did Graceland start? Because that was... <laughs> That, well, that was his normal house, and then he took <laughs> over. <laughs> right, anyway, Rockbusters. <laughs> yeah, go on. I, I give a cryptic clue. Yeah. And, <laughs> and a letter, and it makes up a band. He right? never said the word cryptic a few months ago. I love it. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I feel it's like our own little Eliza Doolittle. Yes. <laughs> right, even Richard will like this one. Mm hmm. Um, here we go then. First one. There's I three of them. Go on. And you email in. If this doesn't turn Dicky round, nothing will. Right. This is an email only competition. Email only. Um, right, here's the first one. Uh, initial is B, so it's B. a band starting with B. Okay. Mm. And the cryptic clue is, I don't like them birds, uh, they shouldn't be allowed in this area. I don't like them birds, they shouldn't be allowed in this area. Next one. Right, the next one. Uh, he doesn't like women, yet he's got a couple of kids, that's a bit weird. <laughs> <laughs> is that a cryptic clue or is that just <laughs> is that just a, is that just a general that, point? Is that that's, yeah? That's the cryptic clue. Okay. And the initials there are P D. Okay. And uh the last one. Uh that Oh one. god that one, that's terrible. That's terrible. Okay, quickly. Oh, <laughs> oh god. And the last one is uh oh, god. that bloke who does <laughs> <laughs> Come on! <laughs> it's making me laugh. Come on, Carl. Be professional. Right, on. right the last one. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do it, it's making me laugh. Oh, come on, I'll come and read them then. No, no, hang on, hang Come on, Carl. Right, here we go. They don't do this on <laughs> Blockbusters on TV, do they? No, come right. on. That bloke who does sport on telly. <laughs> 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 He's got a little kid, right? Uh, initials DC. <laughs> What? Right. Is that, was I'm that the clue? I'm completely confused by that. Was that the clue? Yeah, that bloke who does sport on telly. Yeah. He's got a little kid. Initials DC. Okay, is that a band? Um. What well, nice. Uh, it's. Oh, well, I'm not going to tell you. I'm this is a Norway well, no, sandwich. <laughs> is it. What is it? Is it Fine. a band or not? Right, so just quickly recap. That's okay. Say, it's, it's, it's a come D. on, Carl. Right, come on. Quick, quick recap. The first one is B. I don't think them birds should be around in this area. Right, that's B, right? <laughs> Second one, he doesn't like women, yet he's got a few kids. It's a bit weird. That's PD. And the final one, that bloke who does sport on the telly, he's got a little kid, right? DC. <laughs> All right, and uh, it's Ricky Gervais at xfm.co.uk if you want to enter for uh, Hellraiser. Oh, I tell you what, continue to do a little theme here of like some old stuff people haven't heard of. If you're under thirty, probably never heard of this band. It's also a new thing I want to introduce. Uh, it's uh, it's um, show up Camfield. Camfield right. talks the talk. He doesn't walk the walk. He doesn't play some rock classics on his show because he's scared. I'm going to play the tracks that Camfield's too scared to play. Right. This is Kansas and Carry On Your Wayward Son. All right, Raw Nirvana. Amazing. We we're just talking. We we're getting excited about that. Yeah. Yeah, you've got an incredible brilliant. voice, yes. And Grohl, Dremin, it's, it's brilliant. You know you're right, the new one from Nirvana. Well, we're, it's time for Educating Ricky Part 2, isn't it? I'm yeah. excited, Carl. I'm gonna learn so much from <laughs> this. What's the choice again? What's right, you've got, got uh, you've got left. Still, uh, still keep phoning in your answers to, uh, um, Email. Email, sorry, yeah. Uh, the answers to Rockbusters. Busters. Yeah. Right, okay, Educating Ricky Part 2. Um, right. I'm committed to this treatment. Yeah. 
is as well. I've got to go for that one. Yeah? Yeah. Or oh, the other one is the police are causing a bit of a stare. <laughs> He still says it like it's the best thing he's ever come up with, which yeah, way it is. It could be. Right, go on in. I'm committed to this treatment. Right. Do you know the saying? Oh, is it just sayings now? Uh Are they all sayings? This no, 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 no. They're not. Okay. No, the other one isn't. Uh Frog in your throat? <laughs> the saying, there's a frog in your throat? Yeah. I assume it. it's uh, when you uh, croak a little bit. You sound like a, uh, a frog. No. no. Right. Might, might say, seem a bit weird, this one. Right. But years ago, Oh, yeah. Um, so, well, what, what is that clue committed to this treatment? It's about frogs committed. Kerm Ker <laughs> <laughs> probably works better with a K and an yeah. ER written down. Well, also, if you'd pronounced it committed, yeah. but uh, not committed. <laughs> <laughs> committed to this treatment! <laughs> right, go on then. That's right, genius. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, well, what? You get you go to the doctors and you go with throat certain a bit, right? And what they did ages ago. Ages ago. What year was this approximately? We are going back quite a bit with this. Oh, one. okay. Go on. Um, and the doctor would say. Uh, <laughs> he got did history. Imagine years ago. Go on. Um, and the doctor would say, right, keep your keep your mouth open. I need to look at your tonsils, and the jaw would ache a bit because. Because they weren't as quick back then, because they didn't have the technology and stuff, and they'd sure. have to like stare at it and study it and stuff. Mm. And like, they get an achy jaw, right? Keeping their mouth open. Yeah. Like, you get, you know, yeah. and you eat a Mars yeah. bar yeah. or whatever yeah. it's yeah. 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 So, um, they, they'd sat there, and they used to always close the mouth, and they, it used to annoy the doctor. Yeah. Right? Sure. So, what they did, yeah. they used to get a toad. Right. And pour it in the mouth. Rubbish. <laughs> okay, keep, Rubbish. The, keep talking. Keep talking. And, um, that way they couldn't close the mouth because either they'd squash it. Right. Or, apparently you're not allowed to, uh, lick a toad's back. <laughs> <laughs> so the doctor would have them for breaking the law? <laughs> no, 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 but it's poisonous. <laughs> right, a toad's back. You should never lick a toad's back. Or, or, or put it in your mouth, really. Oh, just, just, it, just, it, just, just stop no, for no, a second. Wait, wait, wait. What, what? Can I just ask one question? Go on, yeah, just go ask on. one question. I've got a few, but no, go on. I, I, sure. M my initial thought is, <laughs> it sounds like a brilliant bit of, of sort of medical, uh, knowledge there. It's a great yeah. idea. Yeah. My only thought is, how does the doctor see past the toad? Yeah. At your tonsils? What's he actually looking at with the mouth open? Surely the toad is, is in the way. Is it not around in the way? It, it didn't say. No. Uh, sorry, and uh, my, my question, my first question is, was this on the internet? Yeah. Yeah, okay. D uh, Carl, that is bollocks. <laughs> that is, I mean, uh, Well, <laughs> alright then. Let's turn this round. Where does the saying, uh, you got a frog in your throat come uh, from? Probably because you sound a bit croaky. Probably that. <laughs> probably because you sound a little bit like a frog when you've got a sore throat. <laughs> Carl, did you not question it just for a moment when you read it? Just for a second, didn't you think, that seems an odd approach. Firstly, why a frog, of yeah. all the different because species- Because it's poisonous, it's poisonous. A toad- no, so a toad, so it's a toad right. as well. Yeah, well, that he worked, I'm committed, worked- No, 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 I was gonna change it to, uh, have you heard the news toad day? <laughs> <laughs> but I went with, I went with the frog. <laughs> Oh, God! Right, so, right. so, so that's rubbish. So that's rubbish. Next, um, <laughs> can I have, um, <laughs> let's play a tune, let's come up with the last one. Oh. oh, can I'm I just play? No, just play it, just play it. Yeah? Yo, Carl. <laughs> I think my uh, mate Dave, who sent me an incredible four-disc compilation, that was one of the tunes on there. It's uh, professional. It's, it's incredible. The yeah. Oh, he's gone to too commendable. much effort. Uh, ben Queller. Uh, it's a track called "In Other Words" from his album "Sha Sha." Open wide. Uh, oh yeah, that's <laughs> interesting. Oh, you got there. You've actually got a frog in your throat. Uh, I, I didn't get there. I put it in there. <laughs> that's the most ludicrous story I've ever heard, Carl. Why don't you think when you read these things? I, d I think there's always going to be a bit of truth in all of these. I mean, that fella called up, didn't he, and said, um, he said, I'm not sure about the, you know, putting a frog in your throat if you've got, ton you know, problems with your tonsils or whatever. But he said, years ago, um, if someone had toothache, yeah. they'd get hold of a frog and strap yeah. it to the face. Yeah, sure. So maybe down the line, you know, maybe they did. Yeah. Maybe they did. Uh, 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 I think Caligula made what is emperor, a uh, horse and emperor as well, but I mean, you know, it doesn't go on. Um, Dick Anderson's been back in touch. Excellent. Um, I think so. He's obviously, we've listening. turned him round. Up. Well, he loves it now. He's been he? tuning in. He, he says, loves um, it now. He says, Ricky, thanks for a really forgettable two hours of radio. I think I'll spend the time next week counting my feet. That's from Richard Anderson. So uh, we've turned him round. We've no, do you know where the phrase "counting my feet" comes from? 
well, in the olden days, right, I'm talking ages ago, when you really loved something, yeah. you used to, as a, as a sign of respect, like, say, a radio show, mm. you'd count your feet. Mm. And mm. that's where that comes from, that's Carl. Well, what about the, uh, the frog thing with, uh, with, the po with the poisonous back is rubbish. That's true. No, the po toe toes have um, uh, the, the secretions in there. The, the, why? The, the, why? 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 They didn't put it in people's mouths. No. So, why? well, I'll tell you why. When a a a, a badger or a, a heron tastes the toad, it's horrible. Ugh. The toad might die, but it it's for the, the good of the species because then think how many toads like looking like that a heron could eat in its lifetime so the fact that one toad sacrificed itself all those other toads in that heron's manner but will be well, safe. why why i mean you know we we've talked about animals a lot on the show right yeah. and when god made a toad sure right, right? okay well so on, i'm gonna stop you there i'm gonna stop you there stop don't, away don't just let him carry on right okay like there's, there's annoying things out there, you know, jellyfish is a big problem with me. I don't understand why, <laughs> what they do in the sea and stuff. Mm, right. Alright, but we, we'll leave them. Got right? we, we won't, me, but go on. We won't, we won't talk about jellyfish. No. With the toad, right, um, if it's to protect itself. Yeah. Right, now no, say- it's to protect itself, it's to protect its species. No, 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 yeah, but that, surely, right, if, if the toad had a choice, if God said, right, what I'm gonna do for you here, um, you can have something like a lobster's got claws, big claws to have a fight. <laughs> or, I can give you something that if someone's having a go at you, you've got to try and persuade them to lick you back. <laughs> as, as a defence. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what use is, right, oh, oh my god. <laughs> Well, I, t I tell you why. What is God? The up fact to? that there are still toads around is a testament to that defence working. That's all I'm gonna say. Okay? If the toad had died out, you'd have a point. But they're still around. It works, all right? And all right. don't start slagging God off. <laughs> He's got a lot on his plate. He, I mean, he, basically, I think he took on too much. <laughs> <laughs> Particularly in one week. Exactly, it was crazy. <laughs> Danger High Voltage, Electric 6, XFM 104.9, I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Steve Merchant. Carl's getting all flustered because I put an elastic band around his head. And we've had a definition of- Well, uh, hang on a second, the because there's an update to that, Rick. Go on. Um, we did just have, uh, one uh, definition here of uh, a frog in the throat. Apparently, this has come from some uh, internet site, so who knows uh, how convincing it is. But it says frog in the throat meaning suffering from temporary hoarseness, needing to clear the throat. Origin from the old English frogger meaning hoarseness. That's from Chris. Now that sounds slightly suspect to me. Why? But uh, frogger? I mean, it, it seems odd that it would derive from that when it so clearly appears to be. <laughs> you sound like a frog when you when you have a sore throat. Yeah, but but. But the word frog could mm. come from frogger because it sounds I like it. I think it wasn't frogger a game you could play on the yeah, uh, yeah. on the spectrum. Oh, yeah. But yeah. listen, hang on, there's an update to that because uh, just to well, the common point. frog, of course, rana temporara. That's the Latin name. Well, you, your toad is buffo buffo. Right? You're maybe trying to show off, but I think <laughs> you're about to embarrass yourself as Go well on. because you've been slagging off young Carl. Yeah. It says here another email. It doesn't tell us who it's from. Although it's hard to believe now. At one time, medieval physicians believed that the secretions of a frog could cure a cough if they were coated on the throat of the patient. Yeah. That in itself yeah. sounds repulsive. But what makes the idea even worse is the application of the secretions. Instead of painting the treatment on something which may also have seemed uh, rational, a live frog was placed into the mouth of the sufferer, where it remained until the physician decided that the treatment was complete. Right. Uh, apparently Shakespeare's son-in-law, that's a question mark, I don't know what that means. Anyway, it's no wonder that today a froggy or croaky attempt at speech is said to be a frog in your throat. <laughs> so, <clears throat> you can see that what's happened there is Carl's misread or been slightly misinformed about uh, a medieval practice. In a sense, you're both winners, just for taking part. <laughs> 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 What's your yeah. final one, Carl? <laughs> right, the final story is, um, the police are causing a bit of a stare. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait. Um, it's about this fella, uh, I think it's in England somewhere. Yeah. Don't know when it happened, but, uh... Literally ages ago, or? Basically, well, it's when, I think it's when they were trying to crack down on, like, drunken people walking about in the street. Oh, yeah. And they found this fella. Saturday, <laughs> Saturday, that one. And, uh, found this fella, and, uh, all the local people were saying, oh, look at him wandering around, he's, he's drunk and what have you. That's not right. Get the police in. He got arrested and that, and they got him in the court. And uh, the judge was there, and he says, uh, "So you know, what's all this? What's going on? What are you doing wandering about when you've had a drink? You know the rules. Mm. Uh, you shouldn't be doing that. You had a glazed expression on your face. Uh, blah blah blah. What do you have to say for yourself? Uh, he only he only had a glass eye. So Did he have was, two glass eyes. No, he had one. But that okay. was that the, they were about to sort of lock him up. Was he a bit pissed up as well? Well, he was he was pretty livid. <laughs> but was he also drunk with a glass eye? 
No, no, that's oh, the right. weird thing. He oh, wasn't right. even, he hadn't even had a drink. So they just thought, cause he had a weird stare. Because, because his eyes were all glazed. Yeah. Well, uh, well, where'd you get this from? Why are you telling me this? <laughs> 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 yeah, why are you telling me this? I don't, I don't, I mean, thank you, cause it's, you know, killed a couple of minutes, but why is this educating me? What are you, t what are you telling me because here? Because the, 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 there's a bit of a thing there, a bit of a fable, that don't always judge a book by its cover. Yeah? So, the guy, he hadn't even had a drink. He's probably just been shopping. Yeah. Uh, walking down the street and everyone's like getting involved. Like, what's he doing? He I shouldn't. don't, hang on, I don't understand. He's walking down the street, happens to have a glass eye. He was doing nothing else to suggest he was drunk. You don't pick people up just because they, their eye looks like oh, But oh, even oh. if it happened, why are you telling me? With no, with no particular detail. Oh. I know this, but then we're gonna get- It's not enough information. I know, yeah. No, oh. th th there's a bit of a lesson there, educating Ricky. Just, you know, just watch what you say. Uh, don't always jump to conclusions. I'm just- I, I, I don't, I think the, the only education I can take from that is that, um, if I ever do become a policeman, I shouldn't just arrest people because they look a bit drunk. I should just <laughs> tap their eye with a pen and go, goes, <laughs> oh, okay, on you on go. You go. Oh. On you go, yeah. Can, guys, can I just look at that? I'm just gonna email Richard Anderson and tell him I agree. <laughs> <laughs> Right, listen, uh, we're running out of time and um, oh, that. Oh, where did the phrase got, frog in the throat come from? We've got, we've got we've, it here, he's been, he's been told, well, can we play a tune and come back with that? Have well, we got anything lined up? Uh, yeah, we've got the song with the story in it. Come on, okay. Carl, let's do something, quick, play a record. Song with the story in it. But never mind that, just, they're listening, we, this, we discussed this off air, come on. Play a record. Right, right. it's Kings. Kings. Yeah, Kings. Kings. It's a song with a good story in it, you got to listen to the words. <laughs> Carl, what was that? That was a little song that's, with a story. Uh, that's another little feature that we do every Saturday. Uh, so song. make sure you tune in. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, uh, it's a song that's got a good story in it. There's a lot of music about these what's guys. What's that story that, about then? What's that, that story about? You don't know what they're going on about. Whereas that, classic from the Kinks called Lola. Yeah, what's it about? Um, I'd listened to it for the first time properly this morning. Yeah. And what I've worked out from it is, is a fella who goes out for a normal Saturday night out, he's yeah. in Soho. Yeah. He's having a, he's having a Coca-Cola or whatever. And he, uh, he sees, he sees this woman and he can say, oh, she's all right. Yeah. Won't mind a bit of that. So he wanders over and he sort of gets to talking to her. He looks at her and she's got a great figure, nice face and all that. Lovely knob. And, uh, and she speaks and he yeah. goes, oh, God. Got a bit of a bloke's Frog voice. Throat, yeah. <laughs> Not a bit yeah. of a voice like a bloke. But he thought, but, you know, that's her only down point. Sure. Mm -hmm. So he's, he dances around with her and I think he sits on his knee, I think he said. Yeah. Anyway, it turns out it's a fella. Yeah. <laughs> right. So, a sobering yeah. lesson. Yeah. Um, um, what do you take from that? Look, always sort of, if you, if you think you might be talking to, uh, a bloke in dress, dress, just look at it. Adam, he's sort of Adam's apple. Right. <laughs> okay. And he'll probably have a hairier ass than, okay. than a woman. Yeah, I think you've gone too far, with then, though. <laughs> I think you've already. I think you're already, you're already getting too close. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit late to pull out. <laughs> <laughs> no, pun intended, definitely. There was a pun intended. Oh, was it? Alright, was it? Yes. Alright, alright, okay, we don't be disgusting then. <laughs> right, okay, right, and the, the, uh, results of, um, we what was this? We got a winner for the first time. Yes, uh, we, we have, we've got done this feature for- We've got loads of winners. No, we haven't. We've done the, this feature for three weeks. This is the first time I've, um, I've managed to sort of- What? Well, let's go through them then. They're what have they got wrong? wrong? The first one. The first one. What the was first the clue? Well, hang on. Let's just let's just, let's just let's do them in reverse order for a second. So what's what's the last one? The last one. The clue was that bloke does uh, does sport on the telly and uh, he's got a little kid. What's that? That's Destiny's Child. Des, who does ITV Sport, oh, that's got a tiny man. child, right? No, that's, they, that's fine. Yeah, they got that. Okay, that's that's child. What's the one? What's the one? What's the middle one? Right, the middle one. Tiny <laughs> right. Child. The second one was. He doesn't like women, yeah, he's got a couple of kids, that, that's a bit weird. Yeah. Right? That was PD, that was Puff Daddy. That is offensive. Go on. But it's not Puff Daddy, it's Puff Daddy. And he's not even called that anymore, he's called P Diddy. Well. Okay, yeah. fair enough. <laughs> but they got that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, um, and if, so if I'm being tight, these lot are as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Tight means mean something in Manchester. Go on. Right. And the first, the first one that they, they're having problems with, I don't think them birds should be uh, allowed in this They've area. They've got it. Boys then. It's not, it's not boy zone. It's, what's the clue again? I don't think them birds should be allowed in this area. That is perfect. A boy zone. No birds. No women. No women, yeah, birds, right? A boy zone. Sorry, Carl. If that isn't the answer, their clue is better than yours. That is brilliant. What was yours? Boy zone, it works perfectly. What's your answer then? Bangles. <laughs> 
What? I have no idea what that means. Like seagulls. So you you don't want them in this area, so you're banning them. Bangles. <laughs> Well, give it to Boyzone, because Boyzone's better. Then it's to be loud this area, it's a Boyzone. I think we should have a rollover. <laughs> Carl beat them. Carl beat them. You have to use his logic, surely. But theirs works. You can't do what am I thinking. No, that's not what I'm thinking. It perfectly. It works perfectly. I think you've got to give it to the, the ones that got the, the Boyzone. Well, how about, right, because they didn't actually get into my, my head that I'm not well, thinking, right? Well, forbid. How about we just keep back the David Attenborough, and they can have- I'll chuck in the Hellraiser. Right? <laughs> okay. Uh, and, and, uh, <laughs> Blondie album and the Madness yeah, one. Yeah, okay. Pick a winner at random. Pick Steve. a winner, Steve. Uh, I'm gonna give it to Paul Sloman, who got those answers, and he also says, P.S. Carl, you're a moron. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I'm brilliant. giving that to Paul, and uh, good luck to him. <laughs> right, well. He's got a crazy night uh, well. tonight. If we can rush these over to him, he's uh, got a crappy yeah. uh, yeah. Saturday night. Well, well, if I'm a moron, I might get your address wrong when I send them to you. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Coming right it? back at you, Paul. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> right. Do you want to play a song? Is this oh, the oh, was annoyed, because well, they didn't get wild. banned goals. A song from, uh, a song for the la ladies. I think we seem to have missed this a lot of weeks, but, so uh, this sure. is, uh, I've been wanting to play it's this not like us to forget things and that. This is a band at Frente, who kind of came and went and oh, no yeah. one was particularly interested, but they did this, do this lovely acoustic version of the New Order tune, Bizarre Love Triangle, oh, right. and this just shows you how incredible the melodies and the, and the words and everything are. Brilliant, I'm uh, New Order, just uh, play this Good kind. night. Bye-bye. Is this bye. the week? Do you reckon Richard Anderson will be back next week? Yeah, one? Richard Anderson will not miss this show. Excellent. <laughs> Coldplay, the scientist. Have you seen the video of that? Great, it's, it's just brilliant. I, I think I might have worked out. What, what, what is, he's, he's walking backwards, it's all filmed backwards, but he's singing forward. Now, the only way I can work out they've done it without CGI in it and cheating with the lips is that he had to learn, learn it backwards, backwards and did it sort of like bit by bit. Did he do that? He was on Zoe's show like about a week ago. Or oh, so he just sang it backwards. So he learned phrases and they filmed that. Yeah, yeah. But he didn't learn the whole song, did he? They must have. He couldn't possibly have learned the whole song. He must have like stopped it and. <sighs> I don't know. I just it's a great video, though. They always do a good video. No, it's very good. Very good indeed. So it was, uh, yeah, The Scientist. I'm XFM 104 and I'm Ricky Jemais with me, Steve Merchant Hello. and Carl Pilkerton. I had a bit of good news this morning. Go on. Um, I was on the tube coming down and, uh, I don't, uh, I don't want to sound arrogant, I don't want to sound pushy, but, um, I was at Green Park and I'm fairly certain, Rick, it's not 100% corroborated, I'm fairly certain that a woman pinched my arse. So what do you think of that? Yes. Th th there's a lot of pop uh, pickpockets around. Green no, 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 Park, so no, 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 no. My wallet was still there. Really? But even if it wasn't, you know, that would have been money well spent. But, <laughs> but, 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 the, but the wallet was still there, so how, <laughs> what do you think of them apples? Eh? So what did you just pinch off? I don't know, I can't confirm it at this stage, uh, exactly what happened, but it certainly felt like a pinch. I looked round, there By was a woman. There was a woman behind me. You're right. She was fairly old. She was, I think, she's probably in her mid thirties. Right. Um, kind of reddish hair. Right. Uh, I don't know if she's listening. Right. But uh, she knows where I am. And, um, so I don't know how to proceed, really, Rick. I don't know if it's worth putting up some posters <laughs> around the Green Park area. Well, what you could Just do to try and corroborate well, it. If you saw a woman pinch the lanky guy's eyes, no, well, you, could, you could probably get in, uh, a contact with British Rail and look, go back over their CCTV exactly, thing. CCTV cameras, yeah. And then they could probably zoom in and, you know, sort of identifying sort of birthmarks or <laughs> exactly. she might have been holding some up. Then I could hire a private eye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Again, money well spent. <laughs> well, so, uh, so, there you go. You know, I'm just so, saying, I mean, I'm just saying maybe the, you know, maybe things are looking up. Things it's getting are towards Christmas. To the worm was turned. Hey? I don't, I, I mean, you know, it's a little, uh, sexy story to get the show <laughs> it going. Is, it is but, so what sexy. do you make of that then, Carl? Really that, you're Carl? quite damning. Um. What's your answer? Well, I mean, you're quite a, quite a tall fella. Sure. So, she must have really wanted to sort of reach up and <laughs> and have a pinch. Mm. Do you know well, you think she was a dwarf? She, she did it with her teeth. He didn't say she was a dwarf. No, no, but Steve's taller than, you know, his arse. Yeah, but his arse here. isn't six foot nine, is it? Oh, his arse is about three foot off the floor. F four foot? What? Four foot off, off the floor. Uh, no, I don't think so. About three. But she'd have to be a midget to have to reach up to pinch Steve's arse. He is very tall, but I don't know what your point is there, Carl. You're just you're just trying to you you know you're just. Uh, no, no, I think maybe you're just a little bit jealous. Just a little bit of jealousy. Uh, well, do you know what happened to me on the way in? Go on. A homeless person called me a dickhead. <laughs> How did he know? 
<laughs> Do you know him? Is right. that one? He's a local, he's like the local big, no, well. big issue fella. Oh, yeah. yeah. And he know, he knows me, he sees me walking up and down oh, the street. Oh, that's how he knew you. Right. So, um, so I normally have a, have a bit of a chat with him and that. And I walk past him. And, um, <laughs> we're, we're, you know, I can, I can be a little bit cheeky with him because I've been cheeky with him in the past with stuff. Um, you pinched his eyes. No, no, <laughs> just, you know, saying stuff like, God, you're always there. I mean, you got home to go to and oh. <laughs> stuff like that. Yeah, no, just he, breaking the ice, just breaking the ice. Go no, on, he knows, and he laughed at that, right, yeah, last time, yeah, so I thought yeah. I can be a bit cheeky, right? So he goes, uh, he goes, do you want a, do you want a big issue? I said, no. He said, come on, I've got loads of them, right? So I, I sort of said, oh, w when I was a kid, and I used to do a free paper around the free papers one, I said, just put them in the bin and go home. <laughs> right? And he went, yeah, but how am I gonna get any money doing that, you dickhead? <laughs> you see, yeah. I can see his point. Mm -hmm. He mm -hmm. is homeless and having to sell newspapers to get 50p or a quid or whatever. Yeah, uh, and, and sometimes I treat him, right? And today I didn't have any money. I had a takeaway last night and I normally give them a quid and I felt bad not being able to do that because I didn't have any money on me last right, night. Right. I couldn't look him in the eye. Did you night. explain this to the homeless person, the traumas of the takeaway <laughs> without the tip? <laughs> Did you explain that, you know, y you've had it hard as well? Yeah. I mean, look, you don't I know had food delivered to my warm flat. Yeah, it was yeah, you don't know what that's like. You don't know what the trauma is because you can't have food delivered to your flat because you haven't got one. So please don't look at me like that. You should have said. But most people ignore him. At least I gave him a bit of acknowledgement and sort yeah, of- Yeah, took the, took the mick. Yeah. I didn't think I was, I just was being yeah. friendly. Yeah. No, I know. You gotta be careful with the homeless, cause I- this is I, this is true and this is- I- you know when the clocks went- was it- the clocks went back recently? Yeah. So you got an extra hour in bed? Yeah. And um, I was at cash point with a friend of mine, and there was a homeless person sat by the cash point, <laughs> and um, was, you know, we would get some money out and she said to fair some change, and my friend said, oh, he's a bit awkward, he's just trying to make conversation with her, he went, oh, clocks go back. Extra hour in bed. Oh no. I gave her two quid. I felt so bad. <laughs> oh, he didn't God. do it intentionally. He didn't no, realise no. what he said. Just oh, no, making just conversation. Bumbling. It's uh, tricky making conversation with the homeless because there's so many areas you can't, you've got to avoid. You know, oh, what no. was on the telly. Yeah. You know. Although I get recognised by homeless people and they are, are they, I don't know where- Well, you got to remember that's pretty much your demographic, Chris. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah, people, people who watch TV through the window in Dixon's. Yeah, in Dixon's. Yeah, there was a- we can do that as well. Yeah. The well, they, of... they can smell the alcohol on you, they think <laughs> you're one of them. <laughs> oh, I've had to cut down on that. I've all been really good with this training thing. The boxing. Uh, oh, oh, play a record and I'll tell you about it. I had my first week of training. I'm- I'm in trouble. I'm struggling. What do you want to play? Oh, we've got a bit of, uh, have we? Stone Roses, classic. Feeder, come back around. XFM 104.9. Ricky DeVay, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. All right? Uh-huh. Yeah, so I, st I had my first week of training for this, um, charity boxing. Um, for those who don't know, I'm, I'm fighting Grant Bovey, uh, Anthony Turner's husband. Um, it's, it sounds arbitrary, but it's actually because he's, uh, at 41 and about my weight, a bit taller, I think. But, uh, and we've never done it before, but, um, no, it'd be, it'd be fun. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Battling someone for charity. <laughs> yes. Um, no, but, um, it, 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 it's, and I can't believe my luck, because I've, you know, I've been a fight fan for like 30 years, and, um, and they took me shopping, they bought me all the gear, and uh, the training's great. It's really hard, I mean, it's, uh, I imagine it'd be really hard, and it's probably slightly harder than I imagined. And the only bit I like, so the, 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 I, I, I don't like all the exercise and all the stuff you've got to do. I like the bits that look a bit like something I've seen in a Rocky film. Right, sure, You know, sure. we did that thing with the, uh, the string along the ring and I have to pop up and punch and that. Right. That was great. Right, nice. I, Skipping's not bad, I'm trying to get good at that. I like that ball that you go... Yeah, yeah. Are you really good at that? Is that uh, I'm getting, getting good at it. Uh -huh. quite well, and what's well. that teaching you, that particular thing? It's just uh, the rhythm, is it? Uh, it's, it's rhythm and, of course, your arms are up for that long, so it... It, you've got to keep your guard up all the time. Yeah. So that teaches you to keep and your you arms up. And you were, uh, up at six this morning, you broke some raw eggs into a cup and <laughs> you ran up the steps of the town hall, didn't you? I know. Well, with loads of people following me and I shouted, BOVI! <laughs> at the top. No, I'm not going mad, I'm not going mad. Just, sure. just, 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 you know, once every, you know, every other day. Mm -hmm. But I, I'm struggling now. I've, 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 I've I woke up today and I, it was like I'd been hit by a car. Yeah. Just everything aches, so that must be news. But, um, anyway, I had a meeting, uh, the first time with the, with the people, the program makers, because they're following me for a month and everything, and Grant as well. Um, and they said, oh, um, uh, you need a sort of nickname, just for a laugh. And I went, oh, what's Grant using? And he said, oh, I think it's going to use gorgeous Grant Bovey or Grant. I went, oh, I don't know, um, oh, gosh, I better go against that. Um, what about, um, Ricky Gippo Gervais? Yeah. Right? Yeah. And, uh, uh, like, yeah. 
so uh, anyway, I had a fit with Frank Maloney meeting the next day, and uh, it's sort of uh, uh, you know you got to do this nickname, and the bloke said, "Oh, I checked out that name. You can't call yourself Jip." I went, "Well, of course I can't. <laughs> I was joking." He went, "Well, I said, well, it's racist. I was joking. I was making a joke about me, bit." And then he went, "Oh." I don't know. And then uh, I went down to get the, um, buy all the gear from this shop. They got the dressing game made? Yeah. <laughs> <on> the <back. laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I was picking all the stuff, I was going, oh look, that's like Naswar. Oh look, that's like Ali War in the, and I'm going, I'll have that, I'll have that, picking all the gear and everything. And, um, there was a couple of boxers down there, sort of like looking at me, thinking, who's that fat bloke taking yeah. that boxing at 40? And, uh, and I said, oh, I wasn't on it. And the uh, bloke went, oh, yeah, how are you doing? I went, oh, yeah. I said, how long have you been in the game? He said, I've been boxing 20 years. I said, how many fights you had? He said, about 40. And I, went, I said, oh, yeah, help me. I've got to think of a nickname. And I thought, I said, uh, I thought, uh, Ricky Balboa Gervais. He went, right. I went, or Ricky Marciano Gervais. He looked at me and went, what about Ricky Martin? <laughs> <laughs> oh uh, dear! Absolutely justified. Yeah, I, I, I'm not respected yet in the boxing world. <laughs> no, sure. But I mean, only amount of time. Once well, they I see you fight, once they go... see you fight, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's gonna change. So, uh, that have you good. actually have you actually punched anyone yet? Have you actually not any? No, no. I've punched, punched, I punched pads and I punched the uh, the bag and I've sort of sparred and that. I know you're and gonna get a chance to well, punch. Well, someone. as I suspected, um, my my punching power's all right, but my fitness is. I mean, it felt like I was smoking. Yeah. You know, but there's you know bits of lung that haven't been had oxygen in them for twenty years. Yeah. And it's ridiculous. And also because it's not only it's being filmed, but there's the other fighters there that are ridiculous. They're like machines, mm, right? Mm. And it's that thing I go. I can go, right, I can, I can come out on top, but die now of a heart attack, but never give up. Or yeah. I can sit down and go, I'm sorry, I'm, I yeah. feel ill. And I chose that one, and of course they took the mitt. Well, of course. But absolutely. I mean, you know, soon, uh, you know, as I said, I haven't got the respect yet of the boxing fraternity, <laughs> but and how long have you got them before? Four uh, weeks. Okay, so, yeah. and, and do they think that they can turn you around health-wise in that time? Uh, no, they're going to be realistic. coming out Zimmer No, they're going to, they're going to, you know, they're, they're going to teach me the ba basics and see how it goes, you know, right. but I mean, um, you know. And I'm each sure. round is four seconds, is that right? Yeah, yeah, two, four second <laughs> yeah, rounds. With, with a yeah. two hour break in between <laughs> each one. <laughs> a sit down um, meal. So, uh, give the number, I want, I want serious suggestions of my fighting name. Nothing insulting, so what we can actually use. Well, let's give out the email, that's always the easiest. Yeah, Ricky exactly, Dr. Yeah. at xfm.co.uk. What's the number, Carl? Um, 08700 And it doesn't have to be in the middle, it could be at the beginning, like, okay. <laughs> the rage. Okay, Ricky, yeah, yeah, Ricky yeah. the rage. Ricky the, the tits. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. Ricky the man, rest player yeah. record. <laughs> Big it's a good day, yeah, Ice Cube. Yeah. Uh, it talks to me about my life. Yeah, in the <laughs> yeah, yeah. A <laughs> no. couple of emails are already coming in. Rush, they're flooding in, Rick. Yeah. Inevitably, uh, as boxing name suggestions for you. This is one from Matt, I think. Uh, he's given a couple actually. Ricky the Pudding Gervais. <laughs> uh, uh, Ricky Big Mac Gervais. <laughs> <laughs> um. I, the, there's a theme here, Ricky Pasty, please. <laughs> the Pasty, I quite like the Pasty. <laughs> That's comes great, the isn't it? That's <laughs> good, as Carl said, he said, the thing is, if you have a really good nickname, it's embarrassing when you lose, whereas if you just call yourself yourself, it's not so embarrassing when you lose. Carl, this is doing so good <laughs> <for> my ego. <laughs> well, do you know what I mean? If you have, like, Killer Gervais. Yeah, and then you end up, like, vomiting, yeah. choking on your own vomit upside down, Sorry. hanging out the ring. What happens if you win? Do you have to... Whereas there goes the pasty being stretchered off <laughs> in the first two minutes. <laughs> yeah, it's not such a problem. <laughs> there he is being lightly basted. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and chucked down a mine. <laughs> what do you mean? What do I have to do? Say if you say if you beat Grant. Say yeah. Say if that if that happened. Yeah. yeah right. Um. <laughs> what what happens next? What do you mean, what happens? What? Do you think, oh, this is a, a contention fight for no, the no, big no. one? But do they, <laughs> they, 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 yeah. Well, th then we make Ricky too. <laughs> <laughs> No, but you know, <laughs> do you know if they're planning on making more money? Because it's for comic relief, isn't it? So what happens on the night? No, it's, it's, go, no, it's for charity. Comic course. relief would make sense. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Whatever, right? Yeah, it was one. last time. I think it was last time. Is it sport was... relief? It's not sport. It was relief. last time. Oh, right. Yeah, but this is. I think this is a program where. The... And, and how do we? Sorry, how does this? How do you make money for charity from this? Do we? Do we pay to? To sort of for how many punches to the head you're going to take? Or no, no. I just how think long you're going to last. I assume the BBC donate. Money or someone, or a sponsor, or whatever. So I don't know. Just right. donate, because right. it's actually a program. This is more about a program with a, I think I see, a, I a see. charity angle. So uh, yeah. So as if if you get like killed, 
there's more money and food to go around. <laughs> Maybe. Well, no, I mean, the thing is, what's the next step? Because if they go like, right, yeah, well done, you've won, thank you very much. Well, Carl, what do you expect? That, that, that its winner stays on? <laughs> yeah. Like, in a fair, <laughs> where I go out there and let people right, punch me in. Right, Bruno Manning. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and, then, and then my twin gets up. Yeah. Well, what do, what, it's just a, it's a program. He's it's not like, gonna turn it's, pro. It's like faking it. Yeah, but what's the point if he's not gonna go anywhere? Well, look. A what, a sorry, him fighting Grant Bovey in a ring is not entertainment enough. <laughs> yeah, what's the matter with you, Carl? Grant's gonna get his face pummeled in, that's gonna be no, hilarious. But, right, when I did boxing at the youth club. Once, right? when he did boxing, he fought once, he fought a little weak kid, cos it was his first day, battered him, next week it was someone else's turn and he got battered and he left. <laughs> yeah, I said, right, I've had enough. But there was-, there was <laughs> Yeah. There, there was a ladder there that I had to work. Right, and I decided after the sort of the, the first step, I thought it's not for me this. Mm. Yeah. But if you win, it's all kind of like right. Well, yeah, the world's you your go. oyster. But it's a program. It's just a one-off program, isn't it? It's it's like it is like you got to treat it like faking it. Yeah, but faking it, right? That little gay fella who ended up being a doorman, he's actually doing that as a proper job now or something. He loved it so much. <laughs> Do you seriously think I have any intentions of getting into the fight game and leaving <laughs> entertainment behind? Well, what's the point then? <laughs> what do, What do you mean? What's the point in What's What's the point in watching television? It's entertainment or educational. I, I watch it to sort of soak in. Well, this is educational. I'm learning a lot. I am actually learning a lot, and it's, I can't believe my luck. I've got professionals telling me, you know, hopefully how to lose weight and punch hard. That's just fun. It's like, like having golf lessons. Right. But say, I mean, here's an example. Go it's on. A, it's a nice way to plug it. We've got rock busters coming up in about ten minutes or something, right? <laughs> now- Look forward to that. <laughs> people, yeah. people email in, and they don't just do it for fun, they do it because they know they've got some good prizes lined up. Right. So they're doing it because it gets them something. Yeah, my, my prize is that I've learned something in life. I've gone through an experience and hopefully I'll come out in some way better if I don't get mashed. That's it. That's uh, the prize. That's why we do anything, isn't it? I think this is, this is an example of you, Carl, is that you give up too easily. Yeah, and you, 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 you gave that up straight away. You think there's no point in anything. I did, I did Crusaders for a, I think I, I lasted that out for about four weeks. What's What's Crusaders? That? Well, he was my mate, right? He, uh, <laughs> he, was, he, he was religious. Uh huh. And I, I'm not, really. Um, but. No, I mean, you believe in ghosts, though, and shadows pushing people off bikes. But go on. But it's the same time. I think I told you once before that I went to the church with this lad because right. I swore and he said he was going to tell me dad. Yeah. I was <laughs> effing and jeffing. So he said, if you come <laughs> <laughs> is that how they get people to church nowadays? I, I love that one kid that, yeah, he hasn't got, got, uh, got the idea of the protection game. <laughs> There's nothing in it for him. Either you turn to religion or I tell your father. <laughs> right, so, uh, so I went to church with him and that and then the next week he said, I know that was rubbish and you didn't enjoy it. It's when I got kicked out for messing with the tennis ball in the pews, right? I don't think we've heard that but I don't think we could possibly <laughs> go into that now. Summed it up. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> Well, no. No, come, come on. on. That's we'll it. come back that's, to that. That's, that you okay. had a tennis ball once in pubes. <laughs> no, in the views. In the views, right. Yeah. But anyway, so <laughs> I, I went there and I said, I don't think much of this church thing, it's a bit boring. Um, <laughs> Sorry, and so you went to church and you ended up in the Crusades? <laughs> No, the, the it's called, it's the, called crusade? the Crusaders. What it is, it's meant to be the fun part of religion for kids. Uh -huh. right? right. And my mate said, oh, you want to come along? It's, uh, you know, you go on a Friday night yeah. and uh, do it on a Sunday as well. Right. Uh, so I went on the Friday night, it was brilliant. He had Sabutio, <laughs> uh, <laughs> table tennis in this dead big old house. And what do they do right. at the end? Say, oh, I hope you enjoy yourself. Remember God <laughs> gave you yeah. all this. Yeah. Well, it's sort of, you know, enjoy the simple things in life. You don't need computer games. You can play uh, table tennis and, uh, mm -hmm. and talk with your friends. Yeah. And blah, blah, blah. So, yeah, that's all right. I think you'd be happy in a young offenders institution. <laughs> <laughs> You get to clean the toilets there but as well. But don't forget, Carl, I think God invented Nintendo too. <laughs> right. Well, anyway, so that was alright. I loved it on the Friday. Yeah. And my mate said if you go for four weeks, four like weeks in a row without missing a day, yeah. uh, you get a free badge. And, and like, salvation. Oh, I don't, I don't, I don't want <laughs> yeah. like all this sort of being stuck in stuff. Do you know right. what I mean? That's yeah. 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 So anyway, I go on the Sunday. Who thought, was this? Who was this servant of God? Right. <laughs> <laughs> I go on the Sunday, it's like a totally different club. There's no table tennis. <laughs> That's how they trick you. No Sabutio. Yeah. They start handing out Bibles. Oh. 
And it's I like a timeshare like, thing. Hang on a minute, right? <laughs> They're tricky. So, so I didn't go again on Sundays. I used to just go on the Friday. Just go on the Friday. Brilliant. And Brilliant. <laughs> yeah. I'm amazed no one else saw through that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing is, there used to be loads there on the Friday, so they, won't, they won't even notice if yeah. I'm not, like, yeah, do you sure. know what I mean? Mm. That I'm not showing up on a Sunday. <laughs> so anyway, uh, carried on, it was Just this kid in the big Oh, I love that. You, you got one over on the church. So yeah. I, I was loving it, right? Playing table tennis and that. Yeah, and then, no uh, on a Sunday, they found out where I live, and the head fella started coming round, knocking on the door. It's God. <laughs> He's <laughs> everywhere, Rick. <really. laughs> Why did he knock? The fella for like this. The fella who like ran the club, he started coming around knocking on the door. And I saw him coming up the path and I said to my mum, Oh, it's the fella from the Crusaders. Yeah. She didn't even know what I was No. In. She, she, she was thought like, you were off nicking hard cats and stealing cars. She yeah, didn't yeah. have a clue what I was it's talking like, about. You've been going to you church. Been going to church, I don't you believe it. Little bleeder. That's not how we brought you up. <laughs> so uh I said, Look, just tell him I'm I'm not in, tell him I'm not in and then she had to keep doing this and they were coming round every Sunday to try and make me like Go, yeah. go on a Sunday, it was really yeah. important that I went and that yeah. I was abusing the system and all this. Anyway, I didn't go, um, and then- Why when, didn't they just tell you on the next time we turned up on a Friday? <laughs> yeah. No, well, I, I, because there was so many people there on a Friday, you just get mixed in in the crowd. Right. Yeah. It was jammed, it was well popular on a Friday. Yeah, yeah. Right? But anyway, on one of the Sundays, um, it was, it was quiet for a bit, and, um, they stopped coming round. So I thought, right, I can go out again, right, on a Sunday, because I used to avoid hanging around the house. In what sort yeah. of reign of terror? <laughs> is, this is incredible. Right. Yeah, yeah. So, so I thought, right. like the Spanish Inquisition. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought, great, they forgot about me. Yeah. Uh, everything, I can carry on my sort of normal life now. Yeah. And I was playing out in the avenue, fella comes round. Oh. And he goes, there you are, you, oh, you, you know, you're always busy on a Sunday. Uh, you enjoy Fridays and that, don't you? I was like, yeah, yeah. He goes, well, come on, you've got to come with me. And I couldn't get out of it. No. You know I mean, uh, it's like, what could I say? Charlie says. Right? Yeah. So, um, anyway, he nearly killed me in a car crash. <laughs> so that was the excuse I used next time. He had a Mini, right? And right. he was driving us there and he hit the curb, nearly sort of turned over the Mini. Right? There was like three of us in the back. So, I said- <laughs> that record? So. Next time, was came, it a joke? next time he came round to pick us up, I said, look, really enjoyed it and that. I said, but ever since that journey, I really, you know, I don't, I don't want to get in the car with you again because it scared me a bit. I right. said, all right then, I didn't have to go again. That's all right, isn't it? That's extraordinary. Yeah. He almost killed you in a car crash. That's terrible. Right? Thank, thank God no one was hurt. Mm. <laughs> yeah. I remember that-, that Your th life moves in incredible ways. Yeah. Rather like God. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh. So they're, pro go. they're probably round there now, aren't they? Go, is he coming tomorrow? Is he co <laughs> <laughs> what we got? Some? Well, oh, we talking about the prizes next. Oh, well, let's talk about the prizes. We've got the, yeah, we've got the big game Rockbusters coming your way soon, Rick. I know you're excited about that. And like, is there more educating Ricky this week? Have you got that planned? There is. We are struggling on that feature a bit now because I feel like we, we've covered a lot of topics. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Well, I know about hairy Chinese kids yeah. and deaf people that hit their head and can hear again. Sure. So I don't think there's lots more to learn <laughs> in life. <laughs> And the amazing Carl Pilkington. Right, prizes. Yes, them. Rockbusters. Yeah, it's uh, one of the big exciting quiz shows, and this may be one of your last chances to play. There's rumours that it's going to get ditched, Rick. Rumours <laughs> <laughs> there uh, that Carl Pilkington, the creator and mastermind behind it, has already grown tired of it. <laughs> so from the way you heard them earlier on, the very best of the Stone Roses from that we played. Sure, uh, sure. I want to be adored. That's one of the prizes. That's a nice little uh, Christmas compilation. Second hand now, then really, isn't it? Second hand. Yeah. yeah. Fifty years of the greatest hit singles. I'll tell you, there's some great stuff on here. Oh, Opens God. Rick with uh, Bohemian Rhapsody. One of the, not, one of the big, biggest uh, number ones of all time. If you've not heard that in enough already. You're followed then by, uh, John Lennon's Imagine, <laughs> Candle in the Wind, Elton John. You've got, uh, all, all on sorts one of CD, Stephen. Well, it's, uh, they've chosen some of the greatest uh, they, rock minds. They've chosen some of the best songs by some of the best artists. Go on. Uh, Paul McCartney's Mull of Kintyre. <laughs> 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 That's on there. Uh, we've got, uh, let me see. Cult that is pretty impressive though, because they are real big classic number ones as opposed to, you know, the, 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 the song by the artist they didn't really care about. You see those things on, uh, this is not available in the shops and it's, you know, the set Second best song artists have done. It seems odd that we're giving it away on XFM because it includes uh, Robbie Williams' Angels, yeah. uh, Atomic Kittens, Hole Again, Spice sure. Girls' Wannabe, Connie Minogue's uh, Can't Get You Out of the Head, and I think it closes, well it almost closes with Steps Tragedy. That's the penultimate track. It ends though. Uh, any ideas? Yes. It's a big, big hit single. But Do they know it's Christmas Band Aid? Perfect for your uh, Christmas sure, party. Sure, sure, that. sure. Uh, we've sure. also got the uh, Groove Armada current album. Is that yeah, from there? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And signed by the man himself, 
the Big Beach Boutique, uh, DVD, Fatboy Slim's, uh, concert on that Brighton Beach. And, uh, there's all kinds of treats on there. Uh, and includes a, um, an audio commentary <laughs> by, Nor by Norman Cook. I don't know how that works. <laughs> Three hours of him going, this is where the needle almost jumps. Yeah, Watch exactly. for this. I did a little bit of scratching. I'm not very good at scratching, but just uh, a point to that. I'm putting a, putting a different track. You'll see me there. Yeah. There's the crowd loving it. Here's me. I'm just waiting for, this is where I, I put, I go from, uh, I go from Conga Squad to Basement Jacks. Yeah. Look forward to that. That's one of my, I'll pop on what you see there. I've got, I've got Praise You Ready on. <laughs> yeah, I just got, got that. That was slightly dusty. I just had to wipe that down with a damp rag. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, we look forward to that. <laughs> Plus, uh, I suppose this is good if you're a fan. This is uh, a box set of the first series of Linda Green. I think a new series starts this week or has already started. I'll yeah. tell you what I found when I was clearing up, Rick, because I know it's not a big movie this week. We normally give away a big movie. Uh, I was moving house this week and yeah. I found a video that you're more than welcome to if you're a fan. Um, um, no, it stars Kurt Russell. Executive decision. <laughs> <laughs> I've got that to give away if you're interested. Uh, Executive decision with Steven Seagal in a uh, cameo as well. So, uh, <laughs> oh, I think, it's, I think it's on TV this week, Rick. So if you <laughs> miss it this coming Channel Friday, five? you don't tape it this Friday. Well, here it is on video. Let on bring videos. it in because I think Carl's excited about that. I think Carl would like to win that, There's wouldn't he? Great prizes well, there. How about if you come up with an extra Rockbusters today? For the, for the, like, the bonus prize. I don't think I'm the man for the job, Carl. I think it has to come from your unique yeah. take on the world. Carl, you don't, I don't think you've quite worked out why you're funny <laughs> and why things you do are good. Go on then. Right, you ready then? So, uh, just in case, uh, you haven't heard it before, I give you some initials of a band or an artist. We're not in rock buses now, are we? Yeah, I thought, well, we've oh, just... Oh, we, we keep that going, then we got, well, I, I love educating Ricky, that's my favourite thing now. Well, what, what do you want to do, Steve? I oh, mean, it's, it's, it's just, let's see the clues. It's just like you've, it, it's, it's sort of bigged up the prizes. And, and so this be... is only by email. Give the email address out now for people to write it down now, Carl. Right, it's ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. Ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. Only entries on email. Yeah. You're gonna get three clues, you've gotta get them all right. And you win all the You stuff. win all those prizes you said. Okay, Carl, go on then. Right, and just a quick example, uh, the f one of the first ones we did, it was like AK and the clue was Exploding Pet. Yeah. And it was Atomic, atomic kitten, kitten, right? Yeah. So you understand how it works now. These right. are your clues. The first one, um, <laughs> That army has got some well nice trenches. <laughs> that army has got some well nice trenches. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> and the initials there are D W. Do you okay. write some of the questions for fifteen to one? <laughs> <laughs> Go on. So that army has got, got some similar well phrasing. Nice trenches, okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, the second one. Um, what were the initials there, Carl? That person. D D W. D W. Yeah. Right. Uh, the second one. The top of them curtains are all wrecked. All the materials all worn. <laughs> He acts it out though. We've got to get him on telly. We have got to get him on telly because his little face and his so that's, his gestures. And that's the second one. The initials being H V. Okay, the top of those curtains are wrecked. All the materials are all worn out. Right, H V. <laughs> and, <the laughs> and the final one. Um, here's the final clue. Um, I was in Texas the other week. Right, I tripped and landed on my knees in a puddle. <laughs> <laughs> what's the, what's the initials? W H for that one. So I was in Texas. I tripped up, landed on my knees in a puddle. So that's W H. Incredible. <laughs> He's got it. Is right. it great? It's fantastic. It's okay, tell me during the record. Tell me during. Okay. Remember, you're playing for uh, these okay. uh, compilation albums. We've got the Fat Boy Slim DVD, Linda Green oh. on VHS, and of course, uh, <laughs> Executive Decision, starring Kurt Russell as well. <laughs> oh God. Rob Dylan. Just Like A Woman on XFM 104.9. Couple more names, uh, boxing nicknames for you, Rick. Uh, this is from Josh. Uh, Ricky Blue Eyes, I quite like. Uh, and uh, he's also put Toad Rage. <laughs> which, uh, which I quite like. Uh, I'll tell you, our number one fan is emailed again. I'm pleased to uh, announce uh, Richard Anderson, Dicky Anderson. He was in touch Anders last is week. Back. Anders he is back. He loves this show. He's such a fan of the show. And this week he's emailed in. What actually is the point of your show? Is it to confuse, irritate, depress, or what? All of those things, Dicky. Thanks for uh, noticing. Oh, he loves this show. <laughs> he's such a fan. He's such a fan. He's because last week you remember, Carl. He emailed in to say that he'd rather spend his time counting his feet than listen to this show. Presumably he's done that. Yeah. And he's well, how many? Well, how many feet? Yeah. 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 No, but he's, he loves this he's show. Good, yeah. So, uh, thanks, uh, R.A. Thanks for listening. See you later. <laughs> Missy Elliott. Work it on XFM 104.9. Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Educating Ricky? Yeah. 
Should I do a bit of that? Well, they, 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 the clues are coming in, f uh, Furious. The yeah. answers, I should yeah. say. Yeah. 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 So go on in. Oh, this is what- Yeah, uh, Rockbusters is well underway, Carl, don't worry, you've done yeah. your work now. Okay. Right, come on. Um, right, educating Ricky. This is my favourite bit now. Uh, You're just gonna tease us, aren't you, with three, uh, headlines if- And I'll choose one and then we got the other two as well. Yeah, that's go the on. way it works and at the end of it you learn some stuff. Like I say, I'm struggling a bit with- <laughs> with- with knowledge. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> At last he confesses. <laughs> yeah. Go uh, on. Um, so the three headlines for you to pick from, we've got, um, first one, um, we'll have a big fire tomorrow. <laughs> 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 I got a, I got a feeling there's some vegetables involved. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, go on. Maybe. Second one, um, um, he's a bit of a nuisance. Okay. All right. All right. And, uh, <laughs> third one, um, <laughs> Al Bacon in the morning, if you're sick of having me here. Oh, that one. Al Bacon in the morning, if you're sick of having me here. Right, I'm having that one. That's brilliant. Right, well, it's a saying. Do you know, um, cold shoulder? Giving someone the cold shoulder? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, if you have someone round at your house and, um, you know, you, you try to get rid of them and they're hanging around and stuff and you're like, oh, I wish, I wish they'd go, I'm tired and that. Well, years ago, um... When? Literally years ago. Well, ages ago. Sort of, uh, Old times. I think it said medieval times. Yonks ago then. Yonks ago. Yeah. <laughs> medieval, we, yeah. we, we're going back quite a bit on this Well, one. you know when you find out these books? Well, I just popped down when it was. Just make a note. I don't think it says all the time, it just sort of says, you know, it, a few years back. Yeah. Oh, no, no, it doesn't. Well, Never. Uh, all right, I'll make an effort next week. Okay. Right? So, oh, it's annoying that because my girlfriend said to me, just make a note at the time and they'll stop having a go at you. Yeah. Yeah? And I kind of thought, oh, it, it's all right. Didn't, didn't listen. <laughs> I don't think it matters anyway in this one. We're looking at the saying, right? So yeah. it's giving someone a cold shoulder, shoulder, right? <laughs> and what it is, right, ages ago, uh, there wasn't enough houses for people. Right. Because there wasn't much money being made. You know, they weren't big businesses, people weren't earning good money like they are now. So, there wasn't as many houses, right? right. So, what you, what you ended up getting is like, uh, you know, the rich people having a nice place to live. Oh. And the poor people were like wandering about, you know, looking for places to live and that. And what they ended up doing is, they had like, uh, people would go around to the mate's house and say, look, I haven't got anywhere to live, it's a bit cold, can you let me stay? Right? So they'd go, uh, oh, all right, then you can stay a couple of days. But they ended up staying for like weeks. Yeah. Right? So, to sort of get rid of them, what they'd end up doing, they'd be making the dinner and they'd, uh, be making a lovely dinner like, uh, bit of meat, nice warm meat and, uh, nice veg. Yeah. Gravy and This so happened every time, did it? <laughs> this is where the saying came this from. Is this is what happened, Rick. This, this is, is what happened. happened every time. It was in that vague book. <laughs> <laughs> the book of vague <laughs> sayings and stuff. Yeah. Right, so, uh, so yeah, so they'd be making a nice meal, but what they did, they looked after all the family, and yeah. the person who won't go home, mm. they just give them some, like, sort of a cut off of cold meat. Right. So they'd say, you're giving them the cold shoulder. Oh. Uh, meaning. Right. Okay, that's, <laughs> that's rubbish. Um, okay, uh, absolute <laughs> cold. No, why no, no. does that necessarily work? Yeah, yeah. Why is do, why, why do they always, in every situation when you want to get with a lodger, well, still feed him every day, but make the meat lukewarm. <laughs> so we They always to... leave then. Yeah. Oh, this food's lukewarm. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna become homeless and again, they go, wandering the streets. Hold on, are you giving me the cold shoulder? Yes. <laughs> Do you want me to leave? Yes, just say leaving. No, I like, I like to do it cryptically. <laughs> that way, in years to come, yeah. someone will have a little saying about it. <laughs> well, yeah, that, that was our bacon in the morning. Uh, yeah. If you've had enough of meat, we'll leave that. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll... <laughs> Oh my god, in the morning! Oh my god, in the morning, if you've had enough of me! <laughs> so, so uh, back. What are the others? Just tease us again with the others, we'll come got, back to those. You've got, he's a bit of a nuisance, <laughs> and, uh, and uh, we'll have a big fire tomorrow. <laughs> nice, looking forward okay. to that. Okay. Nirvana, yeah. in their version of the man who sold the world to David Bowie Ching. Yeah. Good. Good tune. Good tune. Taken good tune. from that uh, new Nirvana compilation. I like that version, I like the David Bowie version. You can't decide, can you, Rick? You're torn. In fact, I like the Lulu version as well. Is there a Lulu version? Maybe we should play that one, Rick. Yeah. Was this recorded, what, in the 70s? I think she recorded it about the same time right. as David Bowie. I, I, don't, I don't know if he released it as a single. I think it was just on Yeah, so, uh, off the album. Interesting. Carl, Carl, Carl is... Studying. Okay, what's the next yeah. one? What's the ne educating well, Ricky? I don't know, uh... See, like I say, I was lo looking around and there's stuff that is interesting. 
Right, I was looking on the web. But and, there's no point. Well, it's just that I found one about, uh... What's the point? About a lad who, uh, eight years old, yeah. but he's still breastfed. <laughs> <laughs> now, I don't know if you can get anything out of that. <laughs> Is that what his mum said? <laughs> <laughs> so, what do you mean? I don't know if I can get anything out of that. You don't need to. No, it's, it's just that. You know, Where did you read that? That was on the internet. Oh, no. well, yeah. Um, You're always unspe unspecific when you mention it. It's just it was on the internet. Well, yeah. I'm trying to think what I put in. I think I put in why to see if I'd confuse a computer. <laughs> <laughs> Then, Go! You are... No, I did, I did, not I, honestly. I did a search, put in why, and I ca he came yeah. up with funny things that, like, why d is this person doing that, why is that... And it had a picture of this eight-year-old lad, sort of, you know, <laughs> on his mum's nipple. And, um, it was saying, you know, is, is, is this healthy? <laughs> mm. Mm. You sure that wasn't asking you that question? <laughs> Uh, what, you, I put in why to <laughs> confuse the computer. Like, we going, what do you mean? Yeah. Stop it. Yeah. Oh, look, uh, yeah. Uh, Last week, I, I was walking, um, uh, home with him, and I went, uh, I got a, he was saying something stupid, and I went, I've got a competition for next week, let's do a phone-in, and it's called Carl Pilkington, genius or fool. Yeah. Right? And he went, no. No. I went, why not? He went, well, uh, they'd be confusing because they say there's no difference between genius and being a fool. <laughs> Do that, don't no, that's, no, no, but it, it's rubbish. And people say there's a fine line between madness and genius, and oh. you know it's a ridiculous soundbite. Uh, they don't say there's a fine line between a genius and an idiot. Well, the people who do are idiots. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So what what would you do there though, just to sort of wrap that little thing up? What would you do? That lad loves his mum's his mum's milk. What are you ta What are you asking me to come up with? <laughs> no, I'm just a title <laughs> for the the story. No, 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 no. It's what? just it's just what would you do? Right. What do you I mean, what would I do? Well, it's causing a bit of a problem in the area, right? <laughs> what area? In, in America, I think it was. Oh, America, a problem, are they? George Bush is worried about this kid well, who's no, breastfeeding right. at eight. Imagine it like this, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Carl, what are you asking me about this spurious story you saw on the internet? I saw on the internet, there's yeah. an eight-year-old lad, he likes his mum's milk, yeah. and he's saying, is this right? Should it no, be No, it's not, on? but what, 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 what do you want Ricky to do about it? It's not his responsibility, <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, but, but the little town that he lives in, they're all yeah. causing an uproar, right? <laughs> Going, this isn't right, you know, no. I can't let my kid play out in case he's in the garden with his mum getting a bit hungry, right? Yeah. So, oh, God. what should they do? Because his mum's saying, well, he likes it. Yeah. And he, you know, what, so what do you do? I don't know the laws. No, but I'm not asking you to sort out the laws. I'm just saying, if you lived in that neighbourhood, what yeah. would you say? If you went up to him and said, "Look, everyone's getting a bit fed up with this." Look, I'd say, what, 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 what would I do? What do you mean, what would I do? <laughs> what, what are you asking me? <laughs> right, it doesn't matter. No, 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 no. What are you asking me? What are you asking me and Steve and well, the I'm public? I'm just saying. Say if you live next door to this woman. Yeah. Right. The kid's hungry. Eight years old. He's out playing on his bike, and he goes, "Ma'am, I'm getting a bit peckish." And he goes, "All right, son." She whops one out, <laughs> um, and he starts having his having his milk. Right? <laughs> you live you live next door. You're putting your washing out, and you see this going on. <laughs> so you're getting a bit sick of it because it's gone on for months. <laughs> Eight so, years, I see. Why is it your business? Just why are you why are you such a nosy neighbour that you're concerned? What would you do, Carl? Let's turn it back on. Yeah. What would you do? What's your solution? What would you do? Well, I thought. I'd say, right, why are you doing this? And she'd say, um, because he likes it. <laughs> and I'd go, all right then, put it in a bowl first. <laughs> <laughs> so, and you think that would sort that out? No, because I, I was thinking about the whole thing, right, and you do that when you're a baby and everything's all right, innit? Yeah. You yeah. go on, bats an eyelid, sure. have a little baby, having, having a bit of milk from its mum's nice. breast, right? Yeah. You'd almost say it was natural. But you grow out of it. It's <laughs> like, you don't see, it got me thinking about things you don't see, and you don't see... <laughs> Did you put this into a computer? Show me things you don't see. What else no. don't you see? Well, you don't see, like, an old man having a Twix. <laughs> <laughs> you never... <laughs> oh! So what... Oh, <laughs> <laughs> 
you know, you know the terrible thing about all this, Steve, is he's right. You don't see it all. No, man, I know that's a but, terrible but, thing. So what they have got, right, they've made old man's office, haven't they? They've come up with burgers. <laughs> Is that a song? Oh, oh God! You don't see it. <laughs> no, no. Listen now. So they've got their worthers, right? Yeah. So <laughs> Look at him. You think you're giving a lecture yeah, at Oxford? It's, it's not going anywhere. No, you go know? on. Sorry. Go on. I'm what? just saying. Right. You grow out of things. Yeah. And the old man, I'm sure when he was a kid, he'd have a twit. <laughs> yeah. And now he doesn't look right, so he's having. <laughs> Right. I don't think Werther's originals were specially designed for old people. I think they were sweets that just happened to have been made for years. Mm. That's why old people eat them. Yeah. They didn't go, hang on, there's a market here. I've mm. noticed old people aren't eating Twixes. Quick, let's make some yeah. old man sweets. But the, the, the little yeah. advert, he gives it to his grandson as well, doesn't he? He goes, I have a Werther's original. No, I so think it, it cuts though before he throws it back in his face and gets, <laughs> get, get me a Twix. <laughs> and a damn curly whirly granddad, you old fool. <laughs> Electric Six, Danger, High Voltage on XFM, 104.9. Sums up the show, Danger, High Voltage. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant and the amazing Carl Pilkington. So, other things you don't see, Carl? Got any other ones or you obviously been thinking about this? Um, what confuses you? When you look out your window, what confuses you with the world? What, what do you walk around going, oh, that's a bit weird? I remember, um, when you were in, uh, Edinburgh, you were confused because you saw someone putting a parking ticket on some rubbish, <laughs> which confused yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that was weird. Yeah. Um, the world's a crazy place, isn't sure. it? I mean, whatever you look at, you can... <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like what? Like what? Well, oh, anything. I mean, you could look out of the window there and you'll see something and you go, why are they, why are they doing that? Yeah. What are they doing that for? Yeah. Uh, I'll tell you this, uh, this, maybe we should bring back White Van Carl. There's some interesting questions this week, Rick. Yeah. We could, we could pull that out of the bag if you want to. Shall we do that? Just, uh, get, uh, Carl's take on, uh, the world's Let's do it. Let's do it. I'll tell you what, we'll do that in a second. Let's have another Educating Ricky because well, I think you got sidetracked with your, your, your talk of Well, just the other thing on things you don't see, look at the way when I went to school, there was two kids with them big heads. Mm. Now, you don't never see them. <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. no one else saw them anyway, Carl. It was only you that saw two of them, not related, and wouldn't hang around with each other because you think they thought it would be too obvious. Uh, <laughs> webbed, webbed fingers and big heads. That's amazing. And there was a kid with a pigeon chest, so. Oh yeah, and the, and the, the lady with a head, like a bag of spuds. Oh, Let's well, not yeah, go through these again. It just raises too many questions that can't be answered. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right then, so, um, we've got, um, we'll have a big fire tomorrow. Yeah, go okay. on. Is that the one you want? Let's yeah. go for it. Right, um, I think this was like round the 1700s. <laughs> <laughs> He's bluffing. Um, and He's bluffing. Who it's, it's it's was the king then? Mm. Uh, go on. But it's, uh, it's about the word bon bonfire, right? Bonfire. Bonfire. Yeah. Do you know where it comes from? No, go on. No. Right, what happened is it's got nothing to do with Guy Fawkes and that, which is what I thought when I saw it. It's got nothing to do with that. But ages ago, in the 1700s, yeah. right, um, they um, didn't have enough houses, like I mentioned. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. So, if that happens, you get people living on the streets, uh -huh. you get sure. diseases, people aren't cleaning properly, yeah. so you get more deaths. Mm -hmm. All right? Yeah. So, think about it. You've got all these dead bodies lying around. Uh, they're running out of space, because it's like, I don't know, I don't know why they're running out of space. But, okay. <laughs> they haven't, they haven't got much, I don't know why, really. <laughs> I was gonna say, they should have just buried them, but, you know, there's probably more land back then than now. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't need anyone else in the room <laughs> to, uh, to have a conversation with himself. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we could leave and we'd come back and you go, I've sorted it. Yeah, yeah. Well, anyway, for some reason, um, they, they presumably, if, it, if it's going to be they burnt them, it's presumably to do to, to, to it also kills the parasite or, or whatever's carrying the parasite on them, as opposed to burying them and not killing the disease. Well, yeah. So that's what that, there you go, you've worked it out. They, they piled them up <laughs> and they turned it into a celebration because there was a lot of fed up people at that time. <laughs> Is this to be the word bon, meaning good? No, 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 I'll oh. tell you in a minute. Go on. So you've got all these people who are like going around and like, oh, you know, so and so died the other day. And, you know, nearly every week someone they knew was dying. Yeah. So you can imagine like just constant like being depressed. Mm. So, and they've got all these bodies lying everywhere. It's like, oh, God, what are we going <laughs> to do? So they said, we're all too fed up. 
on the moment. <laughs> said, let's, let's make this a better world. This was 1701 by the time they got together. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so they said, uh, what we need to do is, uh, have a big party. Mm. So mm. they said, yeah, yeah. Good thinking. See what you're thinking. So, um, they go, right, well, we'll put all the bodies yeah. in a big pile. Mm -hmm. And they're all diseased and that. So yeah. they set they set fire to the bodies, mm -hmm. yeah. and they, and they said let's uh, have this as a celebration to remember them mm -hmm. by, and you know uh, we'll we'll have a drink and that and have a chat. We'll have this big fire going, and it came from bone fire. Ah, right. So bone it was fire. it was it was all the bones. Bomb fire is is bone fire. Yeah, excellent. Yeah? yeah, that's interesting. So that's that's how it came about. Yeah, in the 1700s. Yeah, that was. Nah, probably. So, I, I reckon it was 1600. Probably about, earlier. I reckon probably. it was the plague. Mm, mm, I reckon right. it came from. But uh, interesting stuff. Interesting yeah, stuff. So that, that's. Yeah. Uh, Did you celebrate Bonfire Night? Is that a big celebration for you? <laughs> Do you like the fireworks? I'm sick of fireworks. I just think it's the, they're rubbish. Is yeah, I'm, I, I'm, I'm not impressed. I've never been impressed by fireworks. Nah. Even as a kid, you know, you have to go to like sort of community kind of get gatherings with a bonfire and fireworks and yeah. some local vicar or whatever would come out and- But I also think the adults teenage. think the kids love it and, yeah. and, and, and if they just got together and said, should we go see it, they'd all go no. Yeah, that's not absolutely. Go. That's not good yeah. this year. It, what would be better is if the vicar had wheeled out like a massive rocket, yeah. climbed in, yeah. gone last <laughs> one to the moon is a bender, <laughs> and then fired himself <laughs> off. Now that, I'd pay to see. That's a firework display I'd like to see. As it is, it's just oh, rubbish. Oh dear. Yeah. That's that excellent. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I'm not keen. No. Sorry, what, what, what clue was that? Um, we'll have a big fire tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Bone marrow. <laughs> Bone <laughs> marrow. Genius. Let's <laughs> play the record. Oh, God! <laughs> oh, right, what's this? Go on. What, tell them. Go on, just get on with it, because I just can't believe what you just said. What, what, what are we doing? Are we, uh, the final one? Yeah. All right, the last one. Like it's No, no, no. Say, say the record. Say yeah. the record you played. Go on. This is, uh, Free Association. Yeah, brilliant. Of right. Shadow Wooden Art. Yeah, and what did you just say to me just before this was ending? He just looked, he just looked over at me and went, are there any animals without a brain? No, right, hang on a minute. No, 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 wait, wait. And I went, yeah, there's animals that are, he went, oh, I was going to talk about this, but it's sad. There's a lad born without a brain, and he laughs a lot, and his hearing and his sight's okay. I'll go, well, that's impossible. You, you, if, if he was without a brain, all that is impossible. And he went, well, it was in the <laughs> magazine. <laughs> no, it was in a book that somebody sent. Right. And I didn't want to bring it up, because it is a bit sad, really. That this, you know, young lad, it is a picture of him sat there with his mum, and, uh, what, uh, Carl! Well, Carl! Forget it. it. It's impossible. Well, there must have been more to the story, He Carl. can't not have a brain. Hearing and sight is a concept within the brain. It's, that's all yeah, it is, right? Yeah. The ears are yeah. just receptacles. They're just, yeah. So. Well, but that's why it was in this book. It was a book of mysteries. Carl, you know, if you, if you, if you, <laughs> Carl, if you're reading a book and you see a photo and you guess <laughs> at what you think the story might be, that doesn't make it true. That no, doesn't make yeah, it true. I, I looked at it because I thought he looks like an happy lad. Sure. And, and I read about it and I thought, that's weird. Like you've said, the fact that he hasn't got a brain but he can see and he can hear. No! Impossible! Really? Uh, impossible. <laughs> okay. Go well, on. Well, I, I don't know who to believe. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, uh, we haven't done it for a while. White Van Man. I thought yeah, there's some back, interesting questions back. raised today and yeah. I think it might be nice to well, them, uh, Carl I think we set Carl up again in the last hour as a person that people want to know yeah, they wanna his know opinions thinking. on they the world. Know, yeah. Yeah, well, uh, yeah. If you're not familiar with it, uh, on Saturdays the Sun newspaper um, asks a typical white van driver questions, uh, his opinions on the week's news mm. and uh, we thought we'd throw these in the direction of Carl. Um, yeah. Good. And then what do you make, uh, what do you make of, uh, this teenage thug, Carl, Mickey Carroll, who spent four months in jail and he's won 9.7 million on the, uh, lottery? Is that justice? When you think of all the good people that are going hungry? And there's a lad there and he's won Did he buy the ticket before he went in? Uh, no, I think he bought it once he'd come out. So he's, he's done his time. He's done his time. Fair enough then, he's, he's been punished. Yeah. Right? He's bought a ticket. He's had a lot of bad luck. Mm -hmm. Now he's having a bit of good luck. Good right, luck next one. Are next you one. concerned that now he's got all that money he could turn into like a sort of mastermind villain? You know, like a James Bond style villain? He's Ooh. got a criminal streak, we know that. Is that a concern for you? Well, I mean, we imagine don't. that he could build we, some kind of underwater fortress. We don't, with, with, with my lawyer's hat on, we don't know that. Yeah, well. <laughs> <laughs> well, he'd have to prove that he didn't have a criminal streak. <laughs> I'd say, have you been in jail for four months? Yeah. yeah sometimes but people are bad because they haven't got any money, so he might be just an angel of gold now. Or yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. One in five children aged between 11 and 16 go on booze binge sessions at least once a week. That's terrifying news, isn't it? Kids 
they, they know, they know too much now. Yeah. yeah. Um, you compared to you, yeah. You yeah. Know, right? <laughs> yeah. Listen to this one, right? Go on. Me, me dad had me, uh, niece in the car, right, running her to school one day. And, uh, she was in the back of the car with a mate. And they were chatting away about stuff like kids do. Um, and he got onto the topic of one of the mates who he said, uh, I mean, you've got to remember, the niece, this point was probably about five or six, something mm. like that, right? Mm. In the back of the car, talking about My Little Pony, whatever it is they play with. Uh, subject changed. Um, oh, that Lisa in, uh, in our class, she's a lesbian, isn't she? Right. <laughs> that was the t that's what they were talking about. Yeah. Chatting yeah. away about it. <laughs> Just openly talking about yeah. lesbianism. And probably, you know, <laughs> this is the topic that they're talking about in the pub when they're having fun. <laughs> Out drinking. Yeah. Yeah, but they might have thought a lesbian was a, a, a you know, a, a funny word or something. You don't necessarily know the, the ins and outs of it, do they? It's, it's weird though, isn't it? Because when I was, when I was younger at school, you didn't like, I mean, you swore a little bit, but it wasn't like major swear words. And you sort of did a little bit of nicking, but nothing like to get up to now. I mean, if... My, my, um, girlfriend, when she was about seven or eight. She was walking to school with her mum and she called her a C-U-N. Right? You are joking. No, she said, oh, you are, because she thought it was a big, she said she thought it was a big furry animal. She thought, so she was being nice. And I was like, where'd you hear that? Where'd you hear that? Like, just heard it at school. So they might, you know, they might not know what it means. Well, I tell you, you know, um, I have to, I'm gonna have to use kind of euphemisms here to tell this story, but when I was at school, I learned, you know, the stronger version, it's not the same word, but it's very similar with one letter change. I'm gonna use twit. Yeah. You know the word I'm thinking of. Yeah. But I'm, I'm gonna use the word twit to replace it, right? And I said, I went round, do you think that's what? Yeah. All right. That's, that's what I'm thinking of. And, um, so can I say it? Am I allowed to say it? No, no it's, it's, not. Not. it's weird though, because no, hang on, some people from Cornwall use that like saying twit. So, if people well, are listening to Cornwall, do you know I think, a twit I think is a pregnant goldfish. Well, well, uh, I I learned the uh, I learned the stronger version of twit. Yeah, um, twat. <laughs> <laughs> For those that aren't sure, <laughs> um, I, I learned this in school when I was like ten or whatever, and I didn't know what it meant. I thought it was just a stronger version of twit. Yeah, I thought it was just if you were really annoyed with someone because they were yeah. a real twit. Because uh, I is worse than I. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Apparently, so you know, Carl would be a twit. That. And, yeah. um, and so I started using this at home because I didn't realise what it meant. I started using this at home. Oh, you twit, you're a twit. And saying it to my dad, you're a twit, you know, you know but yeah. I'm not saying twit. Yeah. And my dad didn't know what it meant either. <laughs> That's great! Like, I can so he started using it as well, right? So uh, then we'd be driving in the car, he'd be saying to my mum, you stupid do it. Yeah. And he'd say to my mum, you, 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 pull over and pull over, you're gonna bother you. He was saying this. Then I learned at school from Mark Johnson what it really meant. Yeah. Stopped using it, obviously finding out it was quite an offensive word. Yeah. Couldn't, I didn't want to bring it up to my dad. I didn't want to sit my dad down and say, dad, do you know that word we've been saying? Yeah. You know what it means? So now, to this day, I never brought it out with him. So we'll be driving. Driving, you know, he'll be, I go in for Christmas, we'll be driving around, he'll be calling my mum that word. <laughs> Left, right and centre. I think she knows. I think she's just embarrassed. Or she's just upset and she knows what it means. She goes, why does he keep calling me this terrible word? <laughs> but he's the only one, I think, in our family who doesn't know what it means. No one's oh, got the guts to say. I don't know whether I should tell him this oh, Christmas. Oh, what a twat. I know. <laughs> <laughs> good to hear that again. Always good to hear that. Swade. Animal nitrate. Carl was all flustered because there isn't a, a, a record set up and he's getting all tizzy. He's been more worried about his competitions than sorting out putting records on ready. Uh, what? I'm, I'm after sort of Steve's song for a love. Well, I'll tell you what, you, uh, why didn't you carry on with your uh, educating Ricky section? I'll have a look on the, uh, on the screen. We'll keep it going, Steve. Yeah, you keep go on. Go on then, right, okay. We've all had, right. we've had a, a few emails. Uh, anyone got it right, Carl? Anyone um, got it right? Ricky, educating Ricky, that's the final one. We've got to get that out of the way. We've got to get Rockbuster as well, though. We can do that at the end. We can go on then. We've only got five minutes left. Come on, just do educating Ricky. Right. God. The, uh, the last one that we haven't done right. is, um, he's a bit of a nuisance. Go on then. Um, again, not, not really, not really that interesting. Thanks. Um, no, like, again, I t spoke to you in the week and he had much better things, like when I tell you about Brian Blessed climbing Everest and for some reason it made him, uh, it uh, played havoc with his belly and what? he followed through and he had to clean up. He shot himself. Yeah, using um, using ice and stuff. Why do you tell? Why are you telling me the Brian Blessed? What, what? In what way is telling me the Brian Blessed shit himself once in any way educational? Because I was saying how he he, he was climbing Everest, right? Right. I give it to him. He's an actor and that, but he, he gave that a go. Yeah. Right. He played. What's the know, point of that? You'd say, wouldn't you? You'd say, God, he's he's you know 
He's oh, so he's all right. Uh, me, me doing a boxing match for no reason is rubbish, but him climbing Everest and shitting himself yeah, is, is commendable. Right, and he's only gonna, like, go and do it again. He's gonna climb it again. Yeah, but he might not shit himself this time. Yeah, but what's the point in going? Nothing's changed up there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, it should be. Well, it has. They've probably, uh, they've uh, probably right. cleared it out by now. Right, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's slip on it. I can't even really bother just telling you this one, cause- Come on! Just honest, do it, or do it now! Steve, how we doing? Look, no, no, never mind that. Look, just tell me what that means. Uh, oh, he's a nuisance. Oh, this is so annoying, Carl. I'm gonna go mental. Right, talk. Right, right listen, I'm just putting right. this in here, right? Right, nuisance is a bit of a nuisance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Apparently, yeah. the old fella who used to hang people. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He used to be able to tell somebody's weight just by looking at them. Right. Um. That's a bit of a bonus fact. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be the judge of that. The, 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 thing, <laughs> the thing that I wanted to tell you yeah. is, um, money for old rope, do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, can't even, I can't even be bothered. Yes, you're gonna tell me now. Come on, Carl. Right, I mean it. Basically, money for old rope yeah. came from the, t right. What was all that about? He can tell someone's weight. <laughs> what was that bonus for? Fact. And Blind Blessed shitting himself. What are you, what? No, tell you <laughs> No, tell me. That now, you nearly made me swear then. Just, I'm getting really annoyed. <laughs> I'm getting really annoyed now. Down with this back, Carl, or I'm gonna go mental. <laughs> Come on, Carl, the time's running out. Man, that people years ago, when people used to be hung, right? Right. If you didn't like the person who's been hung, you'd go, God, I really don't like him. And, to, and so you never forget the time. Because if they're being hung, we take that as red. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, so they never forget afterwards to get the hangman to get the rope. And to cut it up into little pieces, and he'd sell them. He'd sell the little pieces of rope to people. And See, that, so the Carl, that's the most interesting thing, if it's true, that you've come up with. Right. Okay. And so what's what's? You, so they, they sell the rope. They sell the rope, and it's money for old rope. Money for old rope. Meaning, like you know, God, it's easy to make money. That, that all they have to do is cut it up and sell it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm cynical. <laughs> I'm not so convinced. Right, listen, we're, we're really tight. We haven't even got time for the last joke. We've got an ad break and we've got to give out. Okay, answers. give the answers then. This is right. ridiculous. So, Come Steve, on. do you want to pick a winner? Uh, I've got oh. a winner when you give us the answers. Okay, so the first clue was uh, that army has got some well nice trenches. Yeah. That was DW. Who's that? Dandy Warhols. <laughs> It's brilliant. <laughs> it's brilliant. Right. It's good, yeah. Uh, the second okay. one. The top of them curtains are wrecked, all yeah. the material is worn. Yeah. HV, that's yeah. uh, Holly Valance. Oh, he got a phone call for what was saying, I haven't heard it, and she went, she was, he was talking to her off air, and she went, uh, what is it? Uh, so and so, so them curtains went, alright, oh, said, you know the thing around the top of the um, curtain is a palmet, not a valance, and he went, cut her off. Yeah, but. <laughs> My aunt is always making balances on everything. I'll tell you about that next week. Right? <laughs> I'm looking forward to that. Right. Right. Is this the one that farted for five minutes? Yeah, yeah, the very same. <laughs> yeah. Right? So, we'll talk about that. Uh, I was in Texas, I tripped up, I landed on my knees in a puddle, WH. Yeah. Uh, wet knee Houston. Right? Wet knee Houston. Yeah. So, You're a maniac. So, who's a winner? We've got Pete, Catherine and Laura in Newcastle upon Tyne. They're listening uh, online, I assume, and uh, oh, they're going to get digital. those great places. And remember, they've got loads of stuff. They've got uh, the DVD here, they've got Linda Green, they've got Stone Roses, they've got another compilation, and Executive Decision. What did you read about Brian Blessed? Is it actually true, or have you a libel no, to it, it was an interview with him, innit? And what did he like, say? Oh, Come on, what did he say? He said, I, I climbed Everest and the, I played off it with me belly. Uh, let's talk about it next week. We've really run out now. Oh, you're a fool. <laughs>